Okay, everything looks good. The crafting stream for next weekend came together uh, very fast, so uh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good thing, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're overdue, like you said. Absolutely, yeah. We haven't done one in a while. Yeah, definitely. Windows Defender gave me a threat warning when I logged into Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon wants to know something about me, apparently. Yep. Always. Yep. Starship Warden first, change it up a little bit. Yeah. I'm being uh, over the top, changing up the order. No, just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At first I thought you had one long video, but then I realized you get them from different sources, so you... you oh, yeah, yeah, you, and then they're, they're all in different scenes. Manually. Yeah, they're yep. all in different scenes. Are you, still, are you still using OBS? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I just I launch them off of different scenes and just press a button. When I press the right button, of course. Yeah. On uh, on my uh, stream deck. That's the same thing with all the shoutouts. I just program them into a different section on the stream deck. I press one button and I makes things way. I mean, a ton easier. Yeah. I might get a, a stream deck. That might be something else. Yeah, and I have a 15 button, which is more than enough. I mean, for me, uh, you know, just. I don't need the, the mega one. I got one with 30 buttons or 24 buttons. It's just, yeah. you can program in multiple things within. Like each button's its own sub, you know. Yep. Each 15 button has 15 locations within itself. So you know. Is that a little TV screen that changes when you're in different modes? Or? Well, you can program in pictures on each button so it looks yep. like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yep. it's, it's cool. easy. It's really easy to use. Yeah. So. that in my flight sim but I have yeah. VR now so, so that way I don't see the see it anyway but yeah yes exactly a faithful gray Hawkins Scott absolutely <laughs> see like I'll just go in here boom and I hit this button boom and there's troller and shit whole shout out comes right up you know? yep nice. perfect yep Scott, can you hear us? Sound check, sound I hope check. We can. Yep. I hope so. So now I went out of order here. Now I'm confused what to hit next. Awesome. Hey, Seneca, good to see you, man. Good, good, good. Awesome. Great to hear. Well, if it sounds good on mobile, it probably sounds fine on the PC, too, so that's awesome.
right now it's just Dan and me. The ever mysterious Tim will probably be joining us at some point. So. I thought that um, I thought this was going to be a light week for me because you know I don't have any Saturday night stream, but that that's not the yeah. case now. <laughs> yeah, you had a Saturday night stream and a Sunday night. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Enoch? Hello. Uh, I don't know. I will have to ask Tim when the next Barbarian game is. So, um, you can ask him tonight, but, you know, that normally he has to ask me because I have to make sure I'm free that uh, on a Saturday morning for five hours. So, uh, we'll find out. See what he... I don't know if... Uh, there's a shot of one in, in August. I'm not sure. But we'll find out. So, always try to do it so that, you know, keep things fresh and going. Hey, good to see you. Oh, thank you. That's really kind of you. I'm just a normal dude, though. You know, I never grew up, so that's why I guess I'm good at this. <laughs> that's what we all we all trying to stay in not Thank growing you. up. So very, speaking. very kind of you to say that. Filmic fanny that was so freaking hysterical. I mean, it just, you know, it's just, it's so funny. Good question. All right, so hold on. Let me come on line, come on, and then I'll answer that, okay? Give me, uh, uh, we're going to come on early <clears throat> just to make sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that question first. And, and, uh, and that's going to be a big, big question. Uh, next week's Gavin is. Uh, 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 I do it, I don't know, every six to nine months. Um, I just lost my mouse on my laptop and I can't. What the heck? Well, that's not good. That goes back, okay. So, here, for next, I can shout this out right here. Should be my shout out. But I'll, I'll answer that to them. That's that too easy. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, well, I'll, I'll give you a quick. Since we're going to come on five minutes early, I'm going to give. I'll give you a quick history lesson of, of, of where, how, and where, when our stuff all came. Real quick. Just come on a little early and answer that. 
That won't be a problem. Tonight, I continue our Wall of Fame deep dive. Some classics on the wall. Now, we may get to... I may go in a little different direction than I was thinking about it, but we'll see. I may I may bypass the seas tonight, but we'll see. We'll see. It just depends on where the questions go in the direction of the thing. But, uh, but uh, we're going to definitely keep on the world ends of Secret of Bone Hill are our, our, our targets to start us off. Yeah. Now you did most of your research there, right? Yeah, I've yeah. read through still most of them, so yeah. Good, good. Especially on the background side and, and not yeah. in, in every stuff, but the, the background stories and overviews and stuff. Special giveaway tonight. Enjoy this conversation. These have been going really well. We don't have a, a monster guest like we had the last two weeks, but these are rare. Hey, Keith. These are right up my wheelhouse, these. And Tim's as well. Tim, Tim's supposed to join us at some point tonight. So, good evening, everyone. Got the lime green shirt on again here for me. So, uh, I'm J.K. Lord Gazumbo, another Gavin 204. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? And with mm -hmm. me is the great Anna B. Meyer. Hey, Amy. Hello. We got a we got a fun discussion tonight, um, and we're going to concentrate uh, on, but we'll bounce around like usual, usual but these two. Yeah, a whole, whole, whole bunch of yeah. uh, modules. Yes, you got a whole bunch yep. of those copies. These are originals, of yep. course. Yeah, um, these are originals too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good, Amy. These are these are two oh, of my I favorites. Even have two, I have two Bone Hills. One is I bought back in the day, and the other one is from Len Lecoff. From Len himself. Is it signed? Yep. Uh, no, but it, he scribbled in it. Oh, he's got <laughs> notes in it. Oh, that's awesome. It's it's almost as good as signed. He put his stamp in there. His personal good. stamp. Yeah, that's so perfect. It, that's probably as good as it gets. Yep. From the Len from the Len files. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So upon a dream, here's here's my answer to the question here. So have you ever always used miniatures in terrain, or did this happen later in your forty two year campaign? Uh, reason I asked is I never saw anyone uh, we use measures until 3E days. I started playing in 84 for its worth. Okay. So, yeah, it is, Amy. It's a really awesome thing to have. Um, when we started, we always used miniatures, but we would have a big mat, the big mat deal, the dungeon crawl with the, you know, and you're, you're in college. Uh, we don't have, there was no 3D printing back then. Uh, the only good scenery was train scenery and the HO, you know, uh, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't fit for it. Uh, so you'd use your marker and that would represent your walls. And you would usually have those, gren your grenadier figures from the, from the orange box, you know, yellow boxes, some of those in the blisters. Ra uh, Ralph Parthas came out, Prince August came out in the 80, early 80s. And you'd use them but we wouldn't have monster figures. We had all the slag pieces that were like, sometimes you'd get some orcs, but they're, you know, they weren't. And we, we, we called it the, hey, Bones, we called it the fishy box. And that box was all the things that just were not player characters. And we just throw it. So the, the orcs, the goblins, they all looked the same at that time. And then roughly, I'm going to say in the 90s, started, Companies started coming up with better stuff. And so here and there, we'd get some nice, you know, Grenadier would have 
some nice like giants and some uh, part that had the dragons and the Elmore started coming out. Um, and then right around the detail in the 90s started to get better because that's when Geohex, we're playing Battletech at the time, that's when Geohex came out. And I'm like, I can use this for D&D games if I had buildings. So trees weren't a big thing because we used, we had whole big setups with trees of all the HO and we just would glue them down to like plastic board, you know, like, you know, that was green. And we throw a little of the stuff you do on train sets down. I still have them in my back in the, in the basement, in the storage room. Um, so, but we didn't have a lot of terrain. And then at the same time and note that during that era, Dorvan Forge came out. So we had some underground, not much because it was so expensive. We had some rooms and stuff, but miniature building authority came out. And that started when we really started when we got buildings was the, those were the first ones. So we didn't go hardcore into it to like 2000, but we had stuff before that, but it just was not at the level of detail that it is now. Hopefully that answers your question. So I was not playing the way I'm playing now back in 1991. <laughs> no, but we were playing with, we always play with miniatures, but we just did not use them to the visual effect they were place fate holders at the time show ranges distance all that like what we do in our miniatures game now yeah so you had graph paper and we you know that's how we, we do mapping we do mapping that way too on graph paper yeah cool and that's that's uh, that's what we would do. And how about you? how about you back in the day? It was all through your mind. No, we we started using um, a miniature to some degree, but we had a, a huge vinyl uh, sheet that we have actually had hand painted uh, squares on, like a beige enormous. We we bought one of these little mats. Uh, that vinyl ones that you use uh, uh, wet erase or dry erase markers on. But but we, we actually made one that was much bigger. Then I made a table that I painted and we, we actually drew with pencils on. And then we put like a, 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 a glossy uh, um, hey Dave. A varnish or something on top of it. So we, so we had a, a game table or a big a, enormous thing that I put on my living room table. And then we had a projector on top, so to speak. So I've made the, the backside, we made that matte finish and, and we had a projector at the end. And, and then I used tactiles that were plastics to draw on and, and so on. So we, we kind of evolved, but it was very much hand-drawn maps on the stuff. And we yeah. used some miniatures and I had a whole bunch of little, I, I took like little cardboard and, and, and wrote on them. So I took cardboard and had plastic covers on those. So I can use the dry erase markers and just write down what it was and write down how much the, the hit points was left and, and, <laughs> and all the data, so to speak, on them. So I, I wrote, scribbled down very quickly. You, I usually use like wet erase and wrote down like orc one or something like that and, and, and then put them on, on the, the, the board, so to speak. So instead of using miniatures. So we had some things, people, some, some, a lot of the players bought care, uh, minis for their characters. And then for a lot of the monsters, I just had like an enormous quantity of them in different sizes from tiny to, to, to gargantuan. And, and then I just wrote down what it was and put them on the table in different colors too. So we can have groups and stuff. So they were red and blue and, and, and all sorts of colors. So yeah, I could pick from. So this, the table is two four by eight pieces of phenolic board, which you usually see in mm -hmm. toilet partitions, yeah. black core, you know, it's hundreds and hundreds of paper pressed together. That's what my company does. Um, two of those together. This is, this is the adventure before I started streaming. This is number 820. No underlay. You can see the line through there. So it's two four by eight pieces of board. I've had that board since 1995. Yeah. So we had that in the day and we were doing the table, but it just, it, it started evolving and evolving and mm -hmm. evolving. More. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's pre this, you can see this well before 3d printing. And that mm -hmm. was just four and a half years ago. Yeah. So just to give yeah, you an we, idea. We evolved, we had usually had the same technique. So it was kind of a mishmash between having miniatures and, and, and having these markers and then draw maps on it, use projectors and, and, and tactiles. And it kind of evolved. Tactiles was something that I started using here fully when I, when I moved here because we played in a game store for almost 10 years. And, and that meant that, that 
I couldn't have like a setup. I had to be mobile and, and bring it with me. So that's when I've resorted to to markers and 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 the the tactiles. But back in Sweden, we had a projector, ceiling mounted projector, and and a huge game table. Then a huge thing that I put on my living room table, and that was like three meters by two meters or something like that. So it was like ten by eight feet or something. So it was it was it was a huge. Sure, yeah. goblets. I appreciate the rating yeah. yesterday. Of course, I can return the favor. So, yeah. Amy, uh, we have figures that are painted with testers' paints because acrylic. What the heck was acrylic paint back in the '80s? Right? They had the Tamayas. <laughs> the first one I remember were the Tamayas, but they were super expensive when you're young. They were the first ones I remember. Humbrol was a British uh, uh, company that made paints that we used for miniatures back in the 80s and early 90s yeah so you know it's it's good reminiscing but uh um yeah i guarantee you that we will reminisce a lot next sunday's gab and when we do and uh I might as well just shout this out real quick as we're on this topic and then we'll, we'll get started on our wall of fame here uh and this just came together today so i'm sorry to cover you up there and i just threw it up there no, no we, problem uh we got a crafters creative jam on, on next sunday night christine the, the the 3d sculptor who she works with reaper christine van patten will be here mike disney jeremy from the owner of gamescape 3d one of our great sponsors darling who's really getting into painting build a master crafter and i'm just going to sit there and <laughs> moderate because i yeah. have no talent when it comes to that so yeah, it'll be a creative jam, and they'll be they'll all be crafting something live, all of them. Cool. Yeah, yep. it'll be neat. So that'll be next. That'll be next Sunday. Um, all right. So we have a special giveaway tonight, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about this a couple of times. We're going to do two. One of them will be a standard classic D and D reprint. What did I do with them? I had them right in my hand. All right. So where you get your choice of treasures or treasures uh, or an adventure begins and then one module now uh bone hill and keeping the borderlands uh they're coming in i don't have them yet but i have other ones so if you don't want to wait and you want me to send them out tomorrow we can pick another one i have down there i got some good ones but uh comma ca comma comma who you may know ha uh gave me something and i've been waiting for it now this is for the video game people but who cares right this is just gonna be cool this is and this is like one of the best games in the early 2000s this is an original copy signed i think it's chris taylor signed by uh uh of supreme commander in windows so there you go a classic <laughs> so we're gonna give that away tonight so you get your choice if you win if you want this and i'll send it to you it's complete um it, you know it's a real it, it was uh it won multiple awards back then he said hey can i give this out during the stream i'm like sure why not so we'll do that and we'll do that and the classic uh reprint giveaway so we got both of them and uh i've been told just been told to gary con live is going to be rating into us too when they're done so that's pretty neat thank you uh thank cool. you gd for the for the uh hey vancouver good to see you also note i know i'm shouting out too early here but you know whatever uh virtual crowd con we just got our first gray space game entered in into the con for virtual crowd con so we have that coming uh but please get your registrations in and if you're if you're dming get your games in because august 15th are when sign up start so we want to have uh plenty of them and i'm working on the stream schedule as well so uh you know if you are interested in streaming live during that you know um i have to give priority to those you know based on the, how long they participated in and and you know the viewer average and stuff but there are room there is room particularly i want to say sunday morning i got an open slot or two um but uh, i'll work y'all in everyone and some overnights too uh everyone would you know i'm not gonna say no to anyone as long as you're an affiliate so all right where do we start here we start at the beginning and I'm going to start at the beginning with an adventure that's not on my wall of fame, which is up right now. How's that sound? I'm going to throw you a curveball. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm a kid, and I didn't get this first, but In Search of the Unknown is B1. Okay? Now, is it, it's a cool adventure, and why don't I just, why don't I just do it this way, Jay, you dummy? Just bring up the whole PDF instead of bringing up the pick. The pick. It's an introductory module, but as a dumb, petulant 12 year old kid, it has one major flaw to it. What is that? Does anyone know? <laughs> 
Yes, Lois, you had to assign all the monsters to all the rooms. And exactly. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. Look at this. It was it was like a make it build it yourself adventure. Yes. And look, it's all detailed here. I'm like, oh my gosh, why do they do this? So um and it looks cool, but like if you come here, and this kind of reminds me of at the end, it reminds me uh, a lot of uh D one D1's tunnels, right? kind of has that feel to it um did i well that's good bones uh, uh um you can uh you uh, definitely uh, nowadays it wouldn't be a big deal but when you're a young kid it is a problem i'm like oh my gosh i don't want to do that so this i never ran this ever i know that sounds really awful of me never to run the, the original first b adventure but when i got oh my gosh i forgot to bring my Holmes basic box set. That's the thing I left in my basement. I knew I forgot something. So I have my Holmes basic box set, prison edition, with no dice in it, with the chits, right? If everyone knows what chits are, you know. You I've put... seen pictures of them. <laughs> I don't, maybe I've seen them on a convention. Someone showed them. I think I saw them on the table when someone was playing old d d that was showing it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was fortunate enough. As a kid, to, when I got my Holmes Basic, that I got my I got keep on the Borderlands, and uh, it, you know I I think back now that you know, I got B one later on, but I'm thinking if I got B one that original box set, it may have been the end of it for me in D and D. I never you know, played hey, B one or B two. Never had them. Yep. See, and that's I'll cool, Paul, because I, I got it, it's and Dyson's revised maps. It's probably not all random. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it's um. Yeah, the chits getting both B one. You did get wow. That's a that's a mistake. If you did, Amy, you got them both in the same box. That's really cool. So, yeah, all oil shortage, no dice. Exactly, no shirt, no shoes, no dice. Uh, Court of <laughs> fish, time to Ridgemont High. Um, and boy, am I happy I got this adventure. I don't know how many times I ran this, but we can look through my log. It's probably six. I don't know, but. Let's just jump ahead. 25th anniversary. Yep. There you got the update. Yep. <laughs> I have that one. And a PDF of the first of the B2. Yep. Return to the Keep on the Borderlands. 25th mm -hmm. anniversary. And there's, I got a lot of, I got, look, I got my log in here still. Got my notes in here. So um, I, I, I did not, I placed this start in Shieldlands, actually. In fact, one of our groups is called the Keep Group. That's in the shield lands because that's where we placed it. So running T1 visual. Hunt. Well, good. Good to hear. See, I'm glad to see all these old school classics are being run now. So these are B1 and B2 are basic, but it doesn't matter. We're talking, they're so easily convertible to whatever edition you're playing. So I don't think that really make, makes a whole hill of beans difference. You can throw gnomes in here too, if you want. Right. So uh, awesome cover. And we go, and it starts uh, talking about, uh, and you got your, uh, you got your wonderful Albert picture. I always thought that that was cool when I was young. And it just a special introduction instructional module. It mm -hmm. says it it has more instructions than than the yep. DMG or a player's handbook had. Yeah, here comes Gary Khan live. Wow, thank you so very much, Duff and Luke Gygax and Jason awesome. and Welcome. everyone. Thank you. Wow, that is really awesome. Great to see you all. Um, let me, uh, uh, love you guys over there. I love Gary Khan. Uh, yeah. got, I got my platinum badge re-upped already for next year. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. it's great to there see you. Times. Yep. We got, we got two giveaways going. We got a, a classic D and D reprint giveaway going. You need exclamation point drawing. You just gotta be on treasures of Greyhawk adventure begins. And then we have actually a video, an old classic video game donated by comma, uh, we got a, a Supreme Commander in Windows Edition. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing who uh, who wants to play that. It's a really cool one. Luke, great to see you, Luke. Hello. Yep. Great to see you, man. Good to so, see you. So yep. thank you so very much, Luke. Um, you know, stick around if you can for a few minutes. And uh, your dad, we're talking about your dad's module right now. We just started on Keep on the Borderlands. Uh, Luke, tell us uh, something interesting about keep on the borderlands i'm assuming you played it if you can, uh, just that you remember about lots it lots of fun <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots of fun okay yeah i mean it's perfect it, 
it had um uh, thank you for that uh uh uh, tear gift to Luke. That was very kind. If ever did that, really appreciate it. Yeah, it, it is. Um, th that's it. But it, it, the replayability, Bree Yark. That's it. Bree Yark is yep. I surrender and Cobalt. That is a yep. great one. That is in here too. I remember the ogre sitting on the, the the shield, if I recall correctly, in the cave by himself, and the the concealed cave, and the caves of chaos. Yeah, I think that's uh if we just jump ahead here and you, look, you got a lot of blank, uh, blank paper here and, and that was inside it too. Um, and a lot of logs. I mean, it, yeah. it is introductory. Here's, here's the caves of chaos. Uh, I, and never let a square go to waste in the old days in mapping, right? you got to fill the page. Well, you I put mean, two <laughs> was the... one on top of the other and, and fill out every, yeah. Oh, like, look, you never, you never played this? No, Luke, I never. I oh, Luke never, Luke played, never played it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was it, Bill. The, the, the shield yep. was used as a fruit bowl. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but we I, have to remember that that in these days we have to remember that uh, printing was very expensive and paper was yeah. expensive. The printing was expensive. Editing and layout and stuff yeah. was very expensive. So you had to to do the utmost of every square inch or of of of, of prints of space so to speak every part of every page had to be used for something useful because it was very expensive c compared to today absolutely uh and, and also um you know it, it, it's a different time uh and yeah you just, and also all the illustrations and stuff like that was very was in in its infancy we have to remember this the, this these modules are 40 years old so yeah absolutely hey it's good to see you man good to see you arnir awesome Hello. yeah yep. And on it's blue to thwart Xeroxing. Yeah, uh, remember. What was the, um, look, smelling the mimeographs. Remember that? <laughs> we were kids doing that school. <laughs> the mimeographs would be going. Oh, my gosh. Great. Hey, Curtis, good to see you. I'm glad, glad to see everyone on tonight. So, uh, no, real quick, Curtis, and everyone who watched last night and Bones who played last night. That was a fantastic Saturday night special last night. That was awesome, yeah. and I really want to say thank you to all my uh, all my players for that game last night. That was a wonderful but, game. Yeah, but I have to, to say that that I remember the, the books and and D and D stuff had a special smell back then. I don't know what that was on purpose, but they had uh, yeah. a special smell. It had that smell. really special yeah. smell. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is an expedition adventure. This is really not a dungeon crawl because you're going back and forth, back and forth on this adventure, uh, which right off the bat is cool because you you can't do this. This is not a one session adventure. No, it's it's a mini setting. It, yeah. you, you have little locations. You have the keep and 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 you have the the, the caverns of chaos and and stuff like that. And that there's there's the little overview map <laughs> with with. Luke With says, it's the locations. satanic incantations we use to ensorcel all of modules, Anna. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so uh, this is a Gary Gygax original, which makes it uh, super special. And Luke, thank mm -hmm. you for uh, hanging here while we, uh, yeah. we talk about some things here. Um, but anyone know, what... remember the cover art? Is it Sutherland? Uh, hang on a second. We need to look at the what the, the original cover art. That I don't. Oh, Rosloff. Know. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is like I said. That's another great picture. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic but, but, picture. Yeah. And thank you, everyone, for the hype train. But really. I think that one aspect I think is really important. You mentioned it briefly. That I think is really important, and and that kind of got me past because when I started reading this again now, then I got like, what is this? And and um, I was really, really kind of really put off by it, so to speak. And and that is the fact that it's an introductory module yeah. because it lacks certain features that we take for granted in every module, modern module. There is not a single name on anything. Everything is the keep, the caves, the the hermit, it's the, the, the org. Yeah, there is no, there, it's completely washed. There is no setting information, no personal information, not a single name, nothing. It's just functions, the guardsman, the sergeant at arms that they the yeah. keep and, and so on so there's like it's so basic so everything is functional and 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 at first i was like when i read, read it through now it's like this is complete 
oh, I, I, it just bothered me. There was no, no personalization, no, no cool kind of, it, it was no warm kind of getting there feel or horror feel or anything. It's just strictly functional. And I think you, everyone who, who reads and, and plays it needs to, and especially run the adventure, needs to, to understand that that was probably on purpose, so to speak, and, and not oh, just yeah. an o o omission, so to speak. But it, and it, yeah, so, so, so that's one of the, the things, it's, it's kind of very, I would call it sterile in that sense, meaning it doesn't have any of that cozy, cool little setting feel that, that it, Homlet has, for instance, it has lots of it. And, and a couple of the other adventures we're going to talk about later today has, are the opposite. They have tons of that feel. This one has none of it. But I think that was part of this part because it's so early on, that wasn't much fault, but a big part is due to it's being an introductory module. Absolutely. You're supposed to create your own flavor for the framework. And that's yeah, why I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's why it's groundbreaking. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Hamlet was created early. Uh, uh, yeah. Hamlet is created ah. before this. Oh, wow. Okay, I did not know cool. that. There you That's go. a very so, yep. interesting. So that, that uh, kind of nice proves that this was intentionally made very... as an introductory module. So Luke, you just, ta you just taught yeah. me something I didn't know. Thank you so very much. I, so this is a basic adventure. Here we go. Here's your wonderful Thacko right here. <laughs> <Explain>. <laughs> <laughs> so all your five years, here's, here's yeah. one of the, some of the beginning. It's not that hard, yeah. though. Uh, but yeah, it explains, it explains armor class and with what. Now, notice this is very basic. There's no scale mail in here, no studded mm -hmm. leather. This is pre-AD&D yeah. era. This is just D&D. &D. Yeah. And it doesn't have real alignments because it still talks about the chaos outside the realm, so to speak. But right. evil is mentioned once. In that sentence of, of the keep of the of the realm, the chaos outside, and then it assumes that chaos is evil. So evil is actually mentioned once in, in the module, which I think is kind of cool. This the evil snuck into the, the alignment even if it was not in right. the game officially. It actually made it in. It was like someone, yeah, Gary just needed to have it there to kind of tell the the, the readers what what that that all this monsters and stuff out there are evil so you should get to them so to speak yeah so um i just i look at this and i see uh me us playing this i don't know how many before i logged adventures but i don't know how many times yeah. over and over you know just because we you're limited you don't know like it's 78 i'm 11 years old right mm-hmm yeah. So it's you know two years before I started logging adventures, two years before we started our Greyhawk campaign officially. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, and uh, I, th I I I'm thinking we had chits. Uh, I don't think I don't. I'm trying to remember when we had our first set of dice. Yeah. Once after, twice after, Bill. Twice after. If you count this. Yeah. We did this. This is, you know, we did this in the '90s. So we we'll yeah. get to that. And and men, men, yeah, yeah. We men, we get to that later, but. Then I must say, being a cartographer, I must say, for the time, the maps in this one are really good. For, for being this old of an adventure, that was because fantasy cartography was barely invented when this yeah. came out. So and and out I must, must say, especially the, the overview map yes. of the wilderness and stuff is, is really good. Yep. So it's not it wouldn't it wouldn't pass muster in a commercial project these days, but compared to other products of its day, it's really good. Is yeah. this diesel or David Sutherland there? That D sideways with the dots on it. I or I'm not sure. I don't know. But look at the, that that dude looks like Elric of Melnabone right there, and from the yeah. deities and demigods. Yeah. So That's Jeff D. Okay, it's Jeff D. Thank you, Inquisitor. Okay. Yeah, yep. Jeff D. So that uh, and that certainly looks like, a, um, which is cool. Like the thief is stealing. That's it's mm -hmm. funny, uh, funny stuff. But uh, as we get to uh, try and get to some of the uh, locations here, and like I said, it's very well done. It's got you got all your basic locations for uh, having a, a a a large keep, uh, a military setup. Really, it's not a it's not a city, but it's more of a military outpost. Uh, you even have a guild house. Yeah, and it was like some some of the I I've been very critical I think justly on some of these old modules for dungeons and stuff being completely ridiculous and and stuff. But B two has its its faults. It's not that at the bottom. This is much I think designed with much more logic and 
and and much more kind of has more thinking. If more thinking went into the construction of the Janyan and stuff in in B two than than in in several of other old adventures. So so I think it's I, I put it in the middle when it comes to Janyan design from my perspective. I think it should be logical and and it should be kind of a a world where they I, I don't expect them to put bathrooms in there, but but I want to right or latrines and stuff. But it it it's it's not dismal by any means. It's 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 okay. Yep. So here is my first ever. Oh, you can make a menu up and then build bar and in, and and they can have options. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember this is pre helmet for me. So like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Look at that, honey mead, and uh, this is where we, we're like, oh, honey yep. mead must be nice, much much better than uh, any kind of wine or anything because it was so mead expensive. Is, mead is yummy. Mead is, <laughs> it's made from honey. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think yeah. So it, it's it yes, be because lovely. we we know Antonio Banderas could drink it in the Thirteenth Warrior, because mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not fermented from grape or or uh, or barley. So yeah. yeah. All right. So we go down here, and you got uh, you got some details on the uh, on the individuals that are running the place. They call them the curate and the castella. No names specifically. Exactly. That their function. That they they have their titles, so you know what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And it's all they're also very well studied out. And, yeah. And, and all the key stuff is bolded and, and stuff. So, so absolutely. It, it, yeah. It's, it's very, for its time, very, very well laid out. And I think the Castellan's the highest level person in the campaign and the whole adventure here at C5. Uh -huh. Clark, yeah. So you have a fifth level. If you remember the Holmes Basic box set only goes up to third. That's it. Third level uh, for everything yeah. for, for Holmes mm -hmm. Basic, which was, uh, like I said, I, Loved yeah. it from day one. I can't believe I left it downstairs. Yeah. I knew it was something. I and there's one illustration I love: the hermit on page thirteen, the, the hermit in the forest. I don't know who did it, but I it's it's so cool. He sits there in his tree. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, there's also yeah. Is that the one with the the smile, like the dude with a smile? Oh yeah, a little dude, yeah. dude sitting in the tree with a smile, <laughs> and 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 that picture is is really it's very there we go. There we go. It. yeah it's very very simple but and crude in many ways but i think it's it's beautiful in in in, in a lot of, of cool ways i i, I really like that illustration it, it's yeah. it's really cool. he just looks a little nutty oh yeah he looks a little nutty but that's that was he was supposed to be that so so it, but and but i also like it as a landscape illustration so to speak because those trees and the ponds and mushrooms and stuff it looks yeah i i like it i really do arc scott thank you halfling elf and dwarf are classes elf is basically a fighter mage dwarf's yeah. a fighter and halfling's a thief so or is halfling just a fighter Halfling maybe just a fighter. I don't think I've ever played. We played a little bit of D and D, but I don't think we ever played a halfling. I played elves yeah. wow, a, a I don't couple remember. of times or humans. I think in in when I played D and D. Hey, Green Lunar, good to see you. Yeah. So yeah, the Mad Hermit's here, and you can get some information from him. Mm -hmm. Yep. No gnomes. Yeah, it does have a Dwarf little bit fighter, of Japanese yeah. flavor to it, Phoenixi. Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought the halfling was just a short fighter. They were not thieves at that time. So Stormer dying to Toby and Stormer Zoo Gary Khan. Wow, Gary Khan, uh, Gary Khan five. So almost nine years ago. Very cool. Man, there's gonna be some fun stuff. So uh, if Luke, if you're still on, and the whole uh, everyone else, I'm trying to get as many people from the community to go to Gary Khan next year that are mm -hmm. on here. You know, Curtis yeah. BL is going, Anna and me. I know Cannibal Troy is going. We're trying to get our whole community there. So let's hope that that happens. You can't, uh, uh, Jimmy, that's, got, <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah, you what do you go. think, Duff? Yeah. 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 But you have to sit in a basement in yeah. the <laughs> store to, to stream you it. You can go. <laughs> I was just going to say something I get in trouble with, but I shut my... Because Josh would give me stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's next year. Tw yeah. Badges go on sale end of the month. Uh, and, uh, you know, so uh, get ready. And uh, I, it said that there may be some uh, platinum and uh, and even uh, diamonds open. But, uh, yeah, there may be. So mm -hmm. Luke may be able to give us an update on that. But I got my platinum back, so I'm really excited about it. Um, I think another person in the community got a diamond. I won't say who they are. Which is great. Uh, so here's the Mad Hermit. There's Ra see, this is where this is where it's forays. You got the Raider camp out here. 
And, and so think about this, your kid. Oh, wow. We can have brigands and bandits harassing the group and they can be a, a sub part. They don't even have to be part of the, the full, you know, going to the caves and we're like, oh, wow. You know, so yeah. things are starting to click. Uh, yeah, there's this. a lot of, of, of yeah. pieces of, of a good adventure. Pieces of the puzzle are in the adventure, so to speak. It's a very complete adventure that way. It's like a mini setting. Absolutely. And, and very informative, but yeah. but sterile. But on purpose that you're supposed to. But I didn't see that much text about how to go about doing that. But it's it's it it yeah. opens up. We're so talking that seventy-eight. That you can, <laughs> yeah, you can you can put this adventure almost anywhere in a setting where you have a little bit of forest, a couple of hills, yep. and 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 a keep somewhere, so to speak. So here's some, here's some, in the case of chaos, uh, here's some notations I want to show. And the number one here, and let me shrink this just a little bit so it doesn't flip. Monsters learning from experience allow intelligent monsters to learn from experience. The player characters are flaming well against them. You know, very, so, uh, very right. good point. A great yeah. point. Setting I love up defenses. That, yeah, mm -hmm, that yeah. he put that there because that's something that is missing in a lot of adventures and it should be pointed yeah. out. So, so, but that might make it difficult to run it in a competition. Or like as a tournament, because then you're supposed to be, then different DMs can do very different things with the adventure. But when it comes to teaching how to play the game, I think it's essential to point that out. So it's good. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and it, but, and I try to explain this and uh, this is not meant to disrespect anyone, please. Streaming is a lot different than playing with your friends, mm -hmm. not streaming. Streaming, you're entertaining the audience. And TPK suck when you're streaming. Because oh, yeah, all... <laughs> you TPK the half an hour in with first right, encounter, yeah. so uh, to speak. You have to, yep. Playing not live with your friends, TPK, there's nothing wrong with it. But like you said, yep. TPK. Oh, you have to somehow come up with an idea of, of running it that you, because you have to run something interesting for the whole session, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the challenge to it. Again, yeah. It can, the whole thing can be a, a fun and, and just note that that's the whole point of this game is to get together with your friends and play and just, yep. you know, enjoy each other's. Hey, when I got first, my wife, who I've been married to for 26 years, still doesn't understand it. We, and a lot of you who know me, like Bill and Master Crafter knows my wife doesn't get it still. But she knows that we're down playing in the basement every Thursday night instead of out at a bar or hanging out. You know what I mean? Exactly. So she knows, yeah. exactly, she knows where we are. Yep. The mountain lion, yes, the mountain lion with the hermit's tough, and it's, if you run it as a surprise, it's going to take a, a character out. Um, uh oh, Al, <laughs> that's cool. You do. I, I, I uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my games up, and you know, um, and we'll, we'll see what uh, we'll see as well. So we have here's the caves of chaos. Oh. Th yes. th that was interesting, uh, Captain Newman. I didn't know that the first D &D, basic D&D had a full alignment and then they reduced the Law and Chaos because the first one I played was only Law and Chaos. So, okay, that, yeah. was, that was interesting. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It, no, it's CG, LG, CE, LE, and N. That's it. Okay, yeah. Then they go back to Law and Chaos. Yeah. I think on oh. and Men Mulve. Mm-hmm. Okay, right? yeah. and and oh, by the way, I'm I'm uh, reading the the uh, playing at the world uh, that book about the how D and D was developed, and that was actually an alternate version of the DM uh, Dungeon Master. The expression Dungeon Master was actually founded by a, a group in LA that started playing D and D. Oh. They started using it, but they also had another term. A Dungeon Master was the one running it underground, and it was Wilderness uh, Lord was the the DM for running right. it outside. Okay. But that term got dropped, and and DM Daniel Master was the only one that stuck, so to speak. So, Wilderness Lord was was forgotten. But they they used both terms. Wilderness yeah. Lord is oh, it's not that long. Exactly, but, uh, John Peterson's book. Thank you. Yeah, Inquisitor. Yep, that's excellent. So you have your caves of chaos, and they're lettered, and uh, your lower level A's your kobolds. And there are detail. There, there's a lot of detail here, and uh, you know, you get your orcs. You got your you got your ogre. Um, yeah. Here's the out. Here's the wait a minute. There you go. Here's the outdoor setting. That's yep. a good map. I, yeah. I like that map for, for for being such an old product. Yep. That was here's the key. and and that was it's a it's a great map for its time. And this map has a lot of of Lindlakovka over it. 
which means that I think that because I've seen now Len Lakofka's hand-drawn maps, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Len and Gary fiddle around with the map originally, and that was the, the one of the, the the background for it. Or or maybe Len Lakofka looked at some of the, I don't know if one way or the other. Len but this is looks, huge on topography. Exactly, yep. So, so this map lines. has a lot of, of Len, Len hand-drawn Len vibes over it. Yep. That's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure if Luke's on still, but that's a great point, and uh, um, uh, it, it does. You're absolutely correct. It does have that Len feel mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, and this was probably a time when when Gary and Len did collaborate on things and talked about stuff. So, so yeah. So think here, here's one thing though. This road, I wouldn't want to be running on this road regularly. It goes right by the caves. <laughs> so yeah, wherever exactly. that road is, oh. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that perfect setup for being robbed and raided and stuff. So, yeah. so yeah. So you have you have a very nice map and you got some locations mm -hmm. and so you got locations that are way out of the way here too. So you got an area to explore. And it's so. it, it, a rare example, even to this day, of a realistic looking river. I must say that I've seen okay. so many, so many maps that that have horrible looking rivers. And this one has a fantastic looking river that looks natural with some wetlands and stuff. So, yep. So this map is damn good. Yep. Holds up to this day. Yep. And that is always uh, it's always good to note that um, someone did their homework. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. It's probably copied from from a real map with with the streams, or at least so. So yeah, I, I really yep. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a great map. Here's the keep. Yep. Another, Another good, good map. Another yep. good map for for this time, definitely. Yeah. Here, so I could recreate this now with with miniature building authority easily. With all the stuff. Yeah, I, and, and I especially when this. you look at what the surrounding hill look like and and the the the, the plateau around that they keep looks something that you could you could do a really faithful replica of this on yeah. the game table yeah absolutely uh but the, but this is a fan you know it's a fan for its time it's fantastic oh yeah mm -hmm. so you does ever anyone ever seen thunderhold which is in uh which is in city state of the invincible overlord no Okay, it's the Dwarven Keep th Thunderhold, and uh, and uh, hopefully Tim comes on and can describe it. It is wonderfully done. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's really good, but yeah. it's because of the paper being brown and stuff, it's a little tougher to read and all. This is more simplistic, but this gets the job done. Like the Thunderhold one is really, uh, you know, sit this, uh, the Judges Guild people at the time just went all out, right? And just over, sometimes overdid it to the point it was too much. But this is simplistic enough, so mm -hmm. that it gets it. Um, well, that's a nice series. Whoa, man. E e EX1 and 2. Oof. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of Dungeon land. weird ones. Yeah, yeah. they're weird ones. But, Very cool. Yeah. Classic, yeah. Pulling chits out of a sandwich bag. Yep, absolutely. We did it out of uh, cups, plastic cups. That's what I used. Those were the days. Oh, that one's got the corner on it. That's a that's an eight. Don't pull that one. You know. So here and <laughs> your, your original tables of saving throws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Showing uh showing that dwarves and halflings are better at poison saves and better at spell saves. So uh, and you had that all here and some co basic costs. This is basically combine this with the Holmes basic, that, which came in the in the box set together, and you had everything you needed to play up to third level. Yeah. So yeah for class wise and uh, yeah a lot of detail here wandering monster tables even so killer bee yeah so you had some cool things and then you, you continue on with the, uh, all the layers and stuff now I remember the top most layer there's the minotaur and the minotaur was nasty but I recall mm -hmm. all the undead and and it almost was like the t uh, what's that the temple of evil was it or the, uh, I'm trying to find it I know I'm popping through here. That was the toughest. And there was the undead amount was lo extremely large. W was it just called the Temple of Chaos? And K's in the Minotaur. The Minotaur, maybe it's on the next page here. No Lair. Shrine of Evil. The Shrine of Evil Chaos, it was called. There it is. Yeah. Yep. Shrine of Evil Chaos. Eight zombies and just a lot of undead. More zombies, more zombies. Twenty skeletons, twenty zombies. That's the hall. 
that's the grand hall you go down. That's a lot because uh, that's a lot of uh, uh, first, second, and third level. Because with turning rules, you couldn't turn them all. So, um, yep. And there was that, you know, this was not a uh, an easy place to uh, come back. Going through this is an early, early adventure. We had to be. Yeah, this is, yeah. Patrick, your characters are only ever as high as third level. There is no fireball. <laughs> you have to be fifth level to cast fireball. Not happening. <laughs> there are no Mel Sasset arrows. Hands, maybe, yeah. Yeah, burning hands. You can do three points of damage. Mm-hmm. Yep. The burning hands and yes. a magic missile that that's Sh by yeah. it. shocking yeah. grass was really good because it was dying. Oh, yeah, level. that's a, that was a little good bit. One. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and second level was really lacking on a lot of damage. Yeah, spells. you don't have exactly, you don't have, have yeah. that many punchy spells at second level. Yeah. They came at third level, they all yep. that, that's when lightning when bolt you hit fireball. Fifth level. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. you got so the big you didn't wins. have that. You weren't you weren't you weren't going through there, mass mass exterminating. Yeah, I think anything. we I think we, <laughs> we invented some second level punchy spells that were in between just to get some more juice from between. So you get like at third level, you get some fun stuff too. Yeah, you had to so choke point them like you would do in a Walking Dead episode. <laughs> you have to, to, yeah, so uh, but that that was part of the fun. So let's let I want to take a look at this uh, here. Design written by Gary Gygant. So we have Harold Johnston who did Tomo Khan, David Cook, that's Zeb Cook, John Pickens, Michael Price, Evan Robinson, Schick. There we go. There's another big name. Mm -hmm. Stephen Sullivan. There's yep. Editing by Card Cook, Johnston, Leeson, Menser, Moldvay. All the basic uh, uh, future basic individuals. Schick, Sailors, Stephen Sullivan, Gene Wells. Wow. And you got David LaFarce. Uh, the force, uh, our oldest Jim Rosloff doing all the artwork for it. Pretty cool. How we could sponsor three or four dungeons because it was only my exactly. So, see, this is all we had. And I, and I, I think I had us, uh, uh, I think we got B1, someone got B1 in another box set and he brought it over. Like, I'm not filling out all this with all the monsters. <laughs> no, seriously. And that was the same thing in, in Judges Guild. My buddy Bill Runzer got. City State. I got City State of the Invincible Overlord. He got City State of the World Emperor. The World Emperor, none of the locations were on the city map. And I was like, oh, my God, there's like 400 locations and now they're on the map. It's going to take me forever. But City State of Invincible Overlord was all done up. And I was like, oh, this is great. Which one am I going to use? Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, they got plus one to missiles. That's it, my more. They're fighters. They weren't thieves at that point. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but that, that, the charm of the old school game. So I think. If you want an OD and D game, I'm almost positive Scott Casper's running one at, Gre at Greyhawk Con. You can look through uh, through the listings and find that. So here's a list of non-player characters, which you could just pull for your own characters, especially if you had deaths. Oh, I'll just pull this next one. You know, and that that's kind of a, almost Rogues Gallery in the back here. Talked about designing floor plans, uh, other buildings, which was neat. So yeah. there is some basic information here about getting your game going. Uh, uh, this is cool. A gloss yeah, on, a gloss. It has a lots of uh, yeah. really good, good information. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Inquisitor, um, the ever mysterious Tim, has and our group has the second longest campaign, where I have two characters in it, and it's a city state game, and we've we've streamed it five or six times over the last four years, and he's due for one of those, uh, and it's actually the, the city state. Uh, but it's updated. I think he got the third edition one with a new map in it just to get an updated map. So, and it has a glossography. A yeah, gloss, glossary. Which Labyrinth. I think. Yeah, and back in in those days, I think it was really important because if you didn't know a word, if you didn't have a, a really extensive, b b th uh, what do you call it, like a word book at home, you had to go to the library because there was no internet, so so you couldn't <laughs> you couldn't just take your phone and and Google something if you wanted to know what a Bailey was or or, or something, yeah, yeah. what color is or yeah. So the reason we're doing this is we're reminiscing, you know, on my wall of fame. That's number one. Number two, there's no reason that you can't take this or the, especially the return to 25th. I was uh, just going to say that, that it's already been done and yep, it's already yeah, been the redone return to the you. keep of the borders. Should we just mention, talk about it just briefly? Yeah, return? Yeah, because yeah, sure. I think there's a couple of things that, that I think that are, are uh, they, they, the, the, my main critique to, to, to keep of the borderland B2 is that, that it was sterile it didn't have any setting information it wasn't set somewhere and that's what they fixed in return 
all of their, 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 their titles have names, all the NPCs, they are real per people, they have backstories, it's placed somewhere and, and so on and so forth. So, so then from being a sterile, put it anywhere you want adventure, now it's put somewhere and it's giving a lot of flavor and, and depth to it in that sense that was not in the original module. That yeah. I prefer that that's the way I like it, but I can understand since it's an introductory adventure, you didn't want to burden new DMs and players with, oh, I need to know all about this weird world yeah. where they have strange names and stuff like that. But in the return to keep Borderlands, they had placed it and, and give it all the flavor and, and so on. I'm looking to see now I'm hitting wrong buttons, but none that you guys did anything. Yeah. I just want that that's the main thing I wanted to say that they made with the adventure, so to speak, and upgraded it to to later edition with with And they went in and they stuff. detailed things. They call it Kendall Keep in here. Exactly. It's Kendall Keep set in in, in southwest Yeomanry. And so so when I put Kendall Keep on my map, I don't call it the keep or the borderlands because I call it Kindle keep but that's because that's what it's called in the return module, so to speak. And that follows my my the way I name things. I don't name it after the module. I name it for what's it's named inside the module, so to speak. Here it is in the yeoman yeah, Kindle keep. Yep. So, so this there one is. is here placed. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kindle keep. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's good, Left Coast. I mean, it's good to see that they're adding flavor to all the stuff that they're doing and they're enhancing it. And that's that's yeah. awesome that they're mm -hmm. doing that. Yep. So you do have it in the Omri here near Slurotin's Tunnel. Um, you know, so it is kind of out of the way. So there's plenty. Of, and remember, this is a lot of area to, to develop. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot yep. in the Omri here. Now, a lot of people have placed the original in the Rot, uh, over in Rodic, is it? Or? Oh, yeah. But but it, you can place it in lots in the, of, in the of different Mountains, places. So up so, in this yeah. area, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So when we did this, we did it because we were running shield lands and we we're running, you know, uh, this is the era of what happened in the Free City Girl box set with all the, uh, the Horn Society taking over the shield lands. Where did that come from? Right. So we said, well, this keep on the borderlands will be those borderlands somewhere. Right. So we put it, we put it up in this area here. We never placed it, but mm -hmm. that's where, that's where, that's where we put it. Um, all right, Tim probably will not make it, so he got uh, he got spousal tied up. It's just okay. Uh oh, yeah, nah, that's all right. You and I got this. We got this running mm -hmm. here. So, yep. yep. White Plume Mountains there. Yeah, I mean, this is just you know mm -hmm. the area where I placed uh, this return to the keep on the borderlands um, when we ran it. Um, uh, and I'm, whew, man, Bill. What do you think if you're still on? I don't know if he is. Uh, no, it's got to be. 90, 93. I read, what, when is, what year does this published? It's 25th anniversary edition. This came, this came out later than that, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. I have, yeah, this yeah. came out later. So we're 2000, 2000 maybe we ran this. Yep. I got the box set when it originally, originally came out. So, and this just, this upped detail on, on everything in this. Uh, so, can you get this in reprint? Uh, early, uh, did it later? Early 2000s. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh, and look, it's the same map, but just done, redone with a little more detail. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Some other pictures. And we have now named people in here. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, the detail was a lot more. Uh, there's rumors. There's all sorts of, of cool things. Um 90 yeah 99 is the 25th anniversary i i don't think it was i think it was the year after i think we ran it and it was 2000 is my guess so do you know if they consulted i do not no they wouldn't have he would have been gone by then doc he would have been gone and that also comes to play with this and which we will we will um which is in here and we've heard this we heard the story and it's on a gab and that and this is an original Deep Dwarven Delve that Leonard went berserk when they completely rewrote the ending of this for this for this box set. Because he said, This what are you doing? This sucks, right? And Len went crazy. Oh, you know what? My gosh. I have it right in here. So I don't need the homes. Here's so with with Keep on the Borderlands, here's the original uh from the twenty fifth anniversary, here's the original Holmes basic rule book. Uh this is from the twenty fifth, not an original book, but um I wanna take a look at something here spells 
What's the nastiest spell in here? That's a good question. There's cleric. Second level cleric. Uh, hmm. You're right. There's not audible glam. Wow. <laughs> Second level. Not much. And that's the way it went back in the day. There's mana cores in here. There's giants in here. Oh my gosh. So it's pretty neat. Probably sleep. Yeah. Um, you're, you're probably right. Sleep. No, web. Web is. Web's probably. That's a nasty spell. Raven Feeblement. There's no damaging second level spells in here. So thank you for the. Nil the Goblin. Thank you for the follow up. Um, mirror images in here. So they have uh, Illusionist and Mage mixed together. Illusionist has not been created yet either. Neat though. So and that's a try to keep that as nice as possible. So yeah, um, I got an extra nice basic set there, um, uh, Inquisitor. I'm gonna say it's been ten years. Yep. I got it for fifty bucks. It's three hundred now. I mean, the, with, yeah. the, with the boom now, it's just crazy. Now look, they have Mendel the Slaver named here, which is cool. Yeah. So, and, and you know the hermit, he's the bee man. Yeah, he's the bee man now. Yes, <laughs> he's the bee man. That's, yep. that's kind of cool. Here's a joke. Yeah. Here's a joke from Monty Python, Sir Robin. Uh huh. So someone has a, a little bit of a sense of humor here. Who? So. Ooh. Oh my gosh, Arg! Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, that was wow. wow. Thanks, man. Very this very chat kind of you. Explode here. In Boom! Second. John Ratliff yep. did this. Mm -hmm. So he's another one I should have on. That was really nice of you. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. He's a seventh level druid, B man. <laughs> so he's way higher in this than he was in. Um, in well, I, I think they beefed the whole adventure up a, a few notches. Seems like there is a necromancers and all sorts of stuff in in the among the monsters and the NPCs. Yeah, there's five minotaurs in the. There's five, not one. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah. In the so they now. they they beefed it up considerably. I think. Yeah. But I will give I'll give this re uh, this redo a solid B. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. This, this redo, I must say, this adventure is is really cool. It has a and and I, especially since it it's one of the adventures that has is the best written in the sense that it has a lot of background info on everything. Everybody comes with a backstory and half a page of. of uh, just a little NPC someone somewhere and they have lots of info names and stats and stuff so so it's kind of it's a very elaborate adventure it's the opposite of, of the original b2 is sterile completely this one has a, is deep notice deep. the references here to it says unwilling apprentice necromancer the references to the complete book of wizards book of necromancers return to the tomb of horrors all stuff that's second edition. So they're referring to second edition stuff in this remake, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yep. So I um, we haven't done this in 22 years, and it's a it's a worthwhile uh, it's a worthwhile. Oh look, Chantel's in here. Awesome. Welcome, yeah, Tarlek the Necromancer. No, Chantel's in the adventure. Oh, right here. okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's a mummy cat too. Oh, I forgot okay. about that. Yeah. So. Um, Adventure. If yeah, and it's in color too. The map. Oh yeah, Case that case. map they yeah. beefed it up. Nick Cam, thank you. It was it wasn't bad before, but and and also the wilderness map they also beefed that one up. It was good to begin with, but now it's even better. Yeah, but it kept the flair. It's great to reminisce, and I had this discussion, and I want to say that this discussion was on. Discord on the on the uh, campfire Discord, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I think it was there because you know my memory's like a sieve. I'm going to give you that in the in the uh, virtual Redcon Discord. There, uh, we're talking about the early days, and we're talking about 78 to like 81. No, let's do 80 because 81 more stuff came out. You don't have if you if you're brand new, you don't have a lot of first level adventures. You have B1, B2, uh, you have Hamlet, right? Salt Marsh. Please don't tell me N1's at first level adventure. It is not. Against the Cold oh, against Reptile. The, oh, no. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, a. I think, a yeah. tough one. A yeah. tough against the Cold Reptile God is brutal. 
it is it, with all the you know taking over people and uh, people waylaying you that is a brutal adventure i would i'd never ran that first but the next adventure we're going to discuss and why don't we get to it here yeah all right so we go through this i'll keep that up just so it goes and our dear anna and on my dearly departed friend this it says levels two to four this is an introductory adventure mm -hmm. you can make this a level you can make this a one to four adventure hey matt good to see you matt i was just talking man seeing if you're gonna put in anything for virtual graphcon man let me know um you know yeah, Salt Marsh is awesome, Dragonheart. Salt Marsh is not Salt Marsh. You one and you three, you one and you three are on my uh, um, are on my wall of fame. Hey, by the way, the only reason we didn't have a monster hype train from those ten gift subs is because we just had one within the last hour. So it, uh, it's it's it, they have to be split by an hour, but it's awesome. Thank you all for the support. So let's really delve into this, and I want to start with how much do I think of this on my wall of fame. Are you ready? See that? That, all right. Let's see if this is familiar. And Anna, you probably know what I'm gonna, about to bring up, right? <laughs> yeah, the one I very, very quickly. <laughs> uh, let me put it over on the other screen. Let me just get yeah, up here. Let me just do this. very, very. Um, there we go. Yeah, very, very, very okay. qu quick and dirty uh, <laughs> colorization. So, so, yeah. So, Last year we did uh, we did this for Grailcon. I had uh, Carson drew it. Um, uh, I had Carson drew it. Keep do this, and this is uh, Return to the Moat House, right? And we had and Anna colorized this one last year. So this year we had three of them done, and Troy Cannibal was kind enough to have Dan Smith do three of them for us. All right. Yeah. Yes, this is this year's shirt. This is on this year's T-shirt. Yes. Yes. This is the one we decided to go with. And I said, I was going to have people vote on it. And these are both cool. So we had Baltron's Beacon, an ode to Baltron's Beacon done. I, lo I love all three of them. We had an ode to Ghost Tower of Inverness done. Whoops, that's the wrong one. That's that's that one uncolored. So yep. get, let me go to this one. We had an ode to... We had an ode to... Uh, all three. And I was like, you know what? Let's let's do, let's do let's give Leonard his due here, and let's do let's do the virtual Grail con one in for Leonard Lukovka this year. So, yep, this is so this is the shirt. It's on the site already. Um, you know, it's on there. You just gotta you gotta sign up for the con. The the shirt uh, the shirts are coming in this week. There's already people have already started ordering them. Just note, so they're they're in there. They're in the system. So, a nice ode to Leonard there. I'm going to ask the audience. Hey, Michael. Yes. And Phoenix, he's just confirmed with me. So he's going to be one of the ones kicking off the con live stream in Salt Marsh area. So there you go. So you got the, you got the beginning spot there, man. It'll be fun. Um, what monsters on the cover? What is that? It's a tricky one. I've read it through, but I, I would, I have a guess, but we'll see here. Yeah. Yeah. Skelt, uh, so BB, you're close. You spelled it, you spelled it wrong, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, no, a skelter, um, BB got it. It's just called a skelter. Yep. Right. Skelter. It's a yep. skelter. So, uh, yeah, you're gonna, I can't wait for you to, that'll be good. We'll talk and we'll get that all worked out. So yes, it's a skelter. So it doesn't, I, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't appear in any other publication of TSR. It doesn't appear in a monster manual, but I use them. So it's a little bit, it's a ma mage who's actually a skeleton, but he's got his tongue and eyes, as you can see. So, um, many of us, how many of us are clamored Reaper to of pirate ship because of salt marsh? Well, guess what, Mad Cam? Ours is almost ready. Bill and Master Crafter is working on it for a, a sea-based adventure. That's coming. But it's not for Salt Marsh. It's for Carlos's adventure. So, yep. Well, thank you. This, um, and then you have the Zombire, which is another one. So, Len, right off the bat, when he does this adventure, 
is ahead of the curve. And this is 81. So I was going to say 80, there's not much out there early. But 81, a lot more of the Bs come out and a lot more of these uh, entry introductory adventures start hitting. Yet the Zombier is awesome. Um, Len is ahead of his time in this in this adventure. And I, this is a great sandbox. Now, Len's not... A, yeah, yeah, spec the spectator. spectator yep. Yeah, uh, the uh, stone guardian. <laughs> did you read how you make one? No, I did not. You take some eyes off a beholder. Those are the ingredients in order to make a spectator, which means that that's one tough thing to you, do. You have to kill. Yeah, there it is. So you're gonna yeah, have you to have, kill. You have, yeah, you take the eye <laughs> stalks of, of a beholder, some eyes and eye stalks of a beholder, and then you create the spectator. I was like, wow, that's a whole campaign in itself to get the ingredients for this. Is it in return to keep on the world? No, Lord Fourth, I don't, I don't think so. Reminds me of a ghoul from the Lank Mordides. Yeah, it does a little bit. So, but Leonard sometimes would steal from other places and you'd be obvious, like Aquaman, mm -hmm. right? And then other times you wouldn't. But like, you know, everyone... If, if you're if you're fairly new to us, Weja, right? W e j a s is a deity you may know, from, uh, um, even in fifth edition. I, I would assume a great deity, the, the goddess of magic and death. Her original spelling is O u i j a. He wanted to name her Ouija, like the Ouija board, and they said mm -hmm. you can't do that. Yep. So just note that that's this is Leonard we're talking about here. So the deities. So this is a Leonard adventure. Um, yep. Len crushed this exactly and uh, absolutely homage. Yes, so you have the spectator and you also have the stone guardian, which both appear in Monster Manual 2 um, afterwards. So, uh, and he, he but had, the skeletor didn't the skelter and well, no, skelter, skelter or, yeah. and they're only in the encounter, skelter and a zombie. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't even have their own monster entry, so to speak. They're just they, they're kind of in the encounter uh, oh, setup, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, and that is all they so are. They forgot. That's probably why they're forgotten, and and someone should write up and. Well, I yeah. use them, so yeah. I they will never be forgotten in this in this in this whole campaign. Now I know in, that in the I whole do. world of Greyhawk yeah. mm -hmm. with uh, with me here and with I think also Mike Saxton has used them before. Well, what's their speciality, so to speak? What, what... Uh, they're spellcasters. Ooh, okay. a, a skeleton spellcaster and a zombie mm -hmm. spellcaster. Yep, so. I always thought the other has the zombie was a bit of inspiration for the Juju Zombie. It's possible, George. It's very possible, but Juju Zombies don't cast spells. Juju Zombies can use weapons, and Juju Zombies can, are uh, are nasty because they're immune to almost immune to fire, they're immune to uh, all but cleaving weapons, magic missiles. They're immune to magic missiles, uh, so they're a, they're a souped up step above the zombie, I think. Um, yeah. Low level liches, kind of, they're like almost like self willed undead. Like uh, there were someone's servants, uh, you know, or, or um, students, and they all got killed, and the, 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 some, the students came along with the master, right? So, yeah. They do. They dismiss them as low level undead. Compared to word count of L series, the earlier stuff, Len produced a vastly superior product without railroading the DM. Uh, that is true. This is sandboxy. You are dead on on yep. that. Oh yeah. You are. That's a great point. That's why I like it. <laughs> so let's go back here a little bit. You have all these locations outside, right? It says two to four, but you can start a first level party here because there's a lot of things to do in these surroundings. Now, I I, I got sidetracked. Len would not like what I did with this. I didn't place this in on Lendor Isle because I'm like, it's too far away. I don't use anything on the right side of the map, even back in the, those days. I'm putting it somewhere else. Sorry, Len. I, I moved Reston for it. I moved them to other locations, but that's all right. Juju zombies do not spread disease. That is, uh, those are drowned ones you're thinking of. Yep. Drowned ones spread disease. Juju zombies do not. Juju zombies are what, uh, humans that have been uh, energy drained and killed. Yep. Lots of rumors, wilderness area, forest, and then you get into all these outskirts of encounters that Len has done. Len is one for detail as far as it goes. He would put up, look, he's got, look, 
every stat, strength through charisma on every single thing. Mm -hmm. yep. He stats up But that everything. was his thing. Hey, he, he statted up everything. That was yeah. Len's strength. Yeah. yeah. And this one has a lot of, <clears throat> it doesn't have the depth of the return to the keep of the borderlands, but it has, everything is named and it has mm -hmm. a, so it's somewhere in between the, the keep of the borderlands and the return of the keep of the borderlands. It's, it's, it's in, in a sweet spot between and it does yes, have pre-gen, so if you come all the way in the back here, oh yeah, there here you go. Sample player characters are right here. Yeah, so you have pre-gens here, so you can jump right into this if you want to do it quickly. You also have some cool maps. All right, you got underground maps, and then oh yeah, and and there we have one maps. that is definitely has all the Lenda Kafka vibe. The the overview, the wilderness map of the area on yeah, let's page. Get to that. Uh, 15. Yep. Right, it's after all these encounters, and it shows yep. them. Mm -hmm. and we'll go back to show you that map first, and we'll go back. Yep, that is very much um, a little lack of yeah, map. absolutely. This yep. is and this is on a grander scale than the uh, Keep on a Borderlands map. It has, yeah, it's, yeah, and, it's and out I further. can tell that that. The, the um, whoever drew the final map had a Len Lakofka original because the, the, we have some of these the original maps behind this and 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 they this is Len Lakofka's uh, he sketched it out in detail and then they made a, a, a more kind of a formal version and put in the in the in the game. So Lord Force says an F four and return to keep on the borderlands, which I did not remember. There is a Skelter and a Zombire. Oh, well, I, okay. I I did not remember that. So, uh, Lord Four, thank you. That's a kudos to you, man. Well, that's good to know that they owed it to Len there. Yeah. I did not know that, and I want to say thank you. Tribute to Len. I did never. I'm going to check that out. Um, wow, that's, cool. that's that yeah. is cool. So there we go. So it was placed on one other spot. Someone who uh, and uh, wanted to uh, owe to Len, and that's great to see. And I really appreciate you. you uh, you uh, verifying that. So you, this is a large scale area of the map. You have the ruins of Bone Hill, but you have all these areas around Bald Hill. And, you know, the thing is, is that you need to, you need to like find a, a base camp area in this adventure, which is, which is neat. You got to set it up somewhere. And I always, Hey darling, I always had it that um, the base camp was going to get attacked and raided. I always did that. I think there's are there knolls in this one in the area. Is it gnolls or lizard men? I think it's gnolls in the in the in the close areas here. That um, a whole a whole so yeah gnolls. I, I always had the gnolls yeah. take out uh, go go after the base camp. Yeah. So um, and that was a that was a way uh, surprising them at night. So uh, you have all these locations: Guardian Peak, Lark Hill, High Top, Low Point, Ready Forest that are not, have nothing to do with Bone Hill. Have no uh, the Bone Hill location itself. So one of them Frankenstein, both under a massive one from Palestine. Hey, that's a cool idea. I have a hair. And I, I got I brought some of these as well down just if we wanted to discuss some of these, which came out. Uh this is eighty one is the B era. You know, they're like we need more B modules in eighty one they a whole bunch of them start coming out. Um Yep. Which is which is good. All right. So you had your wolf, you had your wolf packs, you had your, uh, and you have all these wilderness encounter tables, which Len was big on too. He loved doing these. Um, like here, I mean, you actually, you know, hundred percent, five to 20 gnolls in an ogre. And if you're second level, that's a tough fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Down here, hundred percent, three to 12 wolves, including wargs. That's a tough fight too. So Len, Len's, Len didn't care about killing the people. He was fine with it. He was fine with killing them, killing you off if you were stupid. Um, yeah. So, and you have uh, a lot of, uh, is that inside the Bone Hill and the Dead Forest? That's still the Dead Forest here. You got, you got, you're starting to get bugbears. Uh, here's your Zombire and Skelter right here, along with a Wraith. <sighs> Uh, a lot of under and dead and zombies on top of the undead hill. Yep. And there's your ruin. You know, you got Len was big on tables. Ruins mm -hmm. observations. Let me blow this up just a little bit. There we go. Yep. Cool Sturges. So here's another thing Len did in this adventure. I'm going to mix stuff. He 
he does. And there's a point. If I recall, this is the adventure. He just we're going to start mixing potions, and not and not tell the players. So we'll get to that too. Yeah, which is really hysterical. Wasn't that like a mishap table in the Dungeon Master's Guide? If you mix potions, yes, you could, but you can yeah. mix them outside without taking them. He mixing two together, and he does that oh. in this adventure. Oh okay. yeah. And oh yeah, there's a whole area where he just said, ah, I'm gonna just. I thought that was when you could get like explosions. You can, you there. can, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cool surge is right there, and uh, yeah, that's that's nasty, and it it, uh, it can paralyze you. So he he does some really neat things, which I like. Uh, and then uh, Bone Hill itself is basically uh, not, not a haunted house, but. It's got a lot of nasty things in it. And I know there, I remember there's multiple entrances. You can go in a secret entrance to go right into the underground levels, if I recall correctly. But I think that's guarded by the spectator. Am I remembering that right? The one thing I never understood about was the back cover art. I forgot what it is. All right. So this room, all right, yeah. uh, Len told the story. And this has happened multiple times. That's an Earl Otis. So I think this I'm re remembering this right. Len said, they got the adventure done. They go, we don't have any back cover art. And I think, I think Len said, I don't care what you put back there at all. And I remember this right, Anna. And then, so they got Earl yeah, Otis. Be, and Earl yeah. just said, all right, how about a Hydra? <laughs> <laughs> he had one laying around or, or something? Yeah, like, and that's what happened. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that Len, Len was... So, so people bought the adventure hoping to get a Hydra in it. There is no Hydra. Exactly. And, and yeah. if, if you all remember Len on the 40 times he was on uh, Legends and Lore or Special to, or Gabbins or whatever with us, Len would answer questions sometimes with no. And that was yeah, it. Yeah, that was the stand. That, nope. And that was it. <laughs> so that's probably, it's like, I don't care. was probably the answer. And Gary yeah. said, okay, well, we'll get Earl Otis to do something. Yeah. And that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. See, they, they <laughs> snuck it on you, Amy. Yeah. He didn't, because Len didn't care, you know, and that's just the way he was. I, I don't think that the artistic side was not that. For him, there was the key, the stats and the stat blocks and the tables and all that. That was the key for him and the maps, maybe. But but don't the, the, the illustrative or the illustrative part of the adventure, I don't think he was that into that bit. Right. Yep. But you had to get all the stat blocks right, so to speak. And there needs to be stats for everything in every village and every, every whatever. So, yeah. yeah. Darling, you still on? I saw you pop on. I wanted to tell you something real quick. So if you're on, uh, just put in chat. I'm on. So uh, yep, he loves. He's on. He loves. Uh, Phil. Uh, Phil went up in both. He's five six. Losing the Steve. There you go. Just wanted to let you know I did experience today, and he went up in both. Woohoo! <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yep. He loves his spellcasters. Len does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so you got, um, you got us, you got a ninth level mage in here. That is pretty, uh, uh, with a conjure elemental spell, which if you know uh, elementals, you need plus two weapons to hit them. Yeah, they're nasty. Uh, yeah, uh, when I talk about a kill zone, um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, but once again, that was Len. I don't know, you know. Some people are going to die. <laughs> Yeah, narrator boxes. Um, some it, it depends on the it depends on the writer, right? Different styles. Um, Len was not a narrator box guy. Um, and then I'm trying to find uh, here's a giant rat nest. And we're gonna go back to the Church of the Big Game, which I thought was really unique. I know he has he has items that he crossed in here. Did I miss that? I'm not sure. He had he had he had potions that he crossed. I know I'm remembering this right. I read. There's Qualt in the Abbot. Qualt in the Abbot appears uh, also, I believe, in L2. Hey. This will drive me crazy. Falco's Tavern. There's Falco's Tavern. That's Restonford. So Restonford is in here a bit. Um, 
showed it earlier as you scroll. I think, all right, so it's in here. I'm just missing it. He has items that are crossed, uh, experimental room. Let me go back. If anyone finds the page, let me know. It's not, it's not there. It's got to be down here in the adventure. Here's the guards. This is all. So, and remember, Len has done maps of Restonford for this adventure, for L2 and after L2. And the community, if you want them, will give them to you. They are done. And they're for the, hey, Toxic Boy, they're for the whole community. We have no problem giving them out. They're, they're, they're an easy pop right into Discord or email to you. All those maps, he, he did them up for the community's use. So, because uh, he had um, he had an invasion of, of Restonford uh, in the third one, where a lot of people got killed, because he liked killing people, which I don't blame him. Into the Dying Minotaur Tavern in the West Wind. Okay, it's got to be here in the lower. It's, I thought it was in the lower levels. Giant Rat Nest. I should have looked it up beforehand. Um. Just uh, send me a whisper and uh, and an email address, and I can email it to you. If you don't, if you're not on our Discord, if you're not on Cannon Fire or Virtual Groundcon Discord, but if you go on them, and I can just pop them into your Discord too. Either way, either way you want to do it is fine. I'll give you all those maps for that. So, all right. Well, as we scroll through, we'll find them. But we'll go. Let's go all the way back to because um, there's a lot in here. Go back to the Church of the Big Game. Which is a really another neat thing that Len has done. Here we go. So, hey, Gargamon coming in. Great to see you. Okay, so you got to appreciate Len's deities. He's done a great work on them, and uh, they're chaotic neutral. Uh, so, uh, the God of Luck, I think, it, it, gosh, is the church, church a big game, Norbo? Church of Norbo? I remember uh, something when, when, when uh, we, we talked about uh, yeah. mapping uh, the Lendor Isles. Len and me, we had uh, some Zoom, Zoom calls together, and, and it was so funny. When I asked him, like, describe the area, what it looks like, and, and, and Len, he thought about it for, like, 10 <laughs> seconds or 5 seconds, like, in eternity. And then he said, well, they, the temple in that area has a cleric, and he's a cleric of, of, I forgot what the deity was, but, and that's very unusual. That was his, and, and, and that's such a cool, that was Len's way of saying it, and and elaborate on on that he was a level so and so, and he had the stat blocks in his head. And I bet if you went back and look at the Excel file or the printout from something he did 30 years earlier, I bet that he was spot on. He remembered that from 30, 40 years ago. I'm gonna give you two. Just click on those, and that should get you into both my uh, the Virtual Crowdcon Discord for the convention and Cannon Fire, where we have a lot of a general chatting going on on Greyhawk. You, there's also there's also Greyhawk online, but you have to go through their site to get their um, um, link. So the Church of the Big Gamble um, is 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 you know it's basically uh, uh, it, the religion is uh, you know the god of luck and it's so you can actually uh, lose all your money here, which is really funny. And there's uh, the game is set up and uh, it, it tells you the rules. Uh, you know on how on how to do it uh so uh you know it's um what's it called it, 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 here's the incantation after each person is imbibed you have to drink first too so it's a drinking game you know which is <laughs> yeah uh it says uh oh master lot of lots bring the divine intervention on my behalf this day all praise to thee who control the destiny of wagerers or oh god of chance may the dodecahedrons of fate come upon not not <laughs> oh that's funny so um yep and he tried to limit the betting money so people couldn't get rich here but you know it, it's it's a fun thing that len uh, len did yep and i i like i said i we appreciated him a lot uh you also so you have bald hill here you also have, you know you have all these other locations you have a lot of uh you know a lot of data this is its own like sandbox area setting you know, you do have the town. Is the town on the original map, Anna, on page 15? Is uh, yeah, it's on, it's on, it's on, yeah, Restaford is on the... Uh... I got it sideways, so I'm turning my head like this. Yeah, it's on there. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, in the lower right-hand corner. Yeah, and yeah. you have a, a map of Restonford itself on the following, the next page. Oh, cool. Which I also think is a good, good map. There it yeah. is. Well, this is the map. This is the map that's been done three times yeah. by date. So this is the map that's updated and we can give to you. So, yep. Very, very cool idea. So... So you, you're going to go a couple levels through this. There's so much to, to take in. And uh, from this, I wanted to, um, and Phantom491, thanks for joining the Cannon Fire Discord there. I just popped on there for a second. From this, from Bone Hill, you're going to be up a certain level, uh, you know, and you got some decent maps. Uh, and think about this. You're going through, this is a, this is all the maps in here, and then you got all the maps in the front and back. You got stuff everywhere. Uh, you know, you got inns, taverns, all noted. Enough here to do a setting in itself. And like I said, if, you're, if you don't want to place it on Lender Isle, that's okay. You know, no one's going to yell at you for putting it somewhere else. I did it myself. So if I did it, it's 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 okay. Um, I still can't find those cross um, cross potions, and that really drives me crazy. I know they're here somewhere. All right, they're met with the fireball burn mark. Yeah, yeah, the burn mark. It, it, lots of lots of great things done in this, um, and it is uh, it, it is worth. It's not on. It's not in the top thirty greatest adventures of all time, which is. I don't know. A lot of people will say the following, that this is Len's greatest, and it, in a way, it is because it is the first, like, murder mystery ever, right? This is the first murder mystery ever in uh, in Greyhawk, or in, in, in publication. Uh, the Assassin's not. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like the Assassin's class. You don't like the Assassin's class, you don't want to run this. <laughs> There's an entire guild entire guild of assassins so in garrison yep so uh and, which is uh, kind of a suitable name for a yeah assassin not absolutely place. yep l1's wide area map lines up closely assassin not. yeah both yep both train makes a nice area or you can just blow up anna's area map right uh a little bit here um so if we come here let's see what we got it needs to be yeah, I have the the oh, beginnings of a <laughs> much much better yep. uh, detailed mm -hmm. map of of, of yep. the area. But yeah, yeah, yes, it is Thank awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think the joint. Is that joint is that <laughs> <laughs> so that is um, very you know Anna and her nicely done work there. So uh, well, the Assassin's Knot is rated in the top thirty adventures of all time. Uh, according to the Dungeon Magazine uh, uh, publication that came out that Gary Hulian was part of, Eric Mona was part of, because it really is a great story. Yep. Um, Tim's, Tim had a character I killed up permanently gridly because he did what you shouldn't do. He went out on his own. A thief went out in the middle of the night. Party never saw him again. He got assassinated, and that was that. So, um, and But without Gridley dying, he would have never had his character Murdoch the Mighty, who's Fighter Cleric, way, way crazy guy, but a great character. So with one death comes some life. As you can see, look at all these assassins. And you also have a dual class here, Telish dual class. And you have all these assassins. So this is this is a great adventure. If you have never played it, it is difficult to run because it's based on timing. But um, it's fun. It's a challenge. And uh, you need to be a little underhanded if you're party. Um, yeah, death does let you appreciate life. So I think this was rated in the top 30s of all time because of it was so groundbreaking at the time. That's why I wanted to share it. I also want to share this because this just missed the cut. If you go to Gavin 8 or 9, when we first did this discussion on adding the final six to the Wall of Fame, uh, this this was one that just missed the cut. So and that was uh, the Assassin's Knot. Yep. So very cool one by Leonard. All right, so so far we've done we've done B two B and L one. Does anyone have any questions? They sell sooner carrots in the gift shop. Well, they probably do. They probably sell a lot of uh, you know 
first time I've seen an Assassin's Guild noted. The second time I saw an Assassin's Guild officially noted as Free City Girl box set. So, um, you know, uh, we don't have an Assassin's Guild. Nostalgia Steve, thank you. We don't have an Assassin's Guild in, uh, in uh, Altamir. There's a Bounty Hunter's Guild. So, yep. Hit that. Don't forget, everyone, we have two giveaways tonight. So, yep. And that, they're, they're available on drive through so you can get them in reprint or just in PDF. So, Anna, thoughts on the two adventures so far? I think they, they're uh, they're solid Len hits, so to speak, in, in that sense. They, they are, and we have to, again, remember when they're made, so to speak. I think they were groundbreaking in the sense that they were, they introduced, it, there was a, they were a great combination, meaning they had Dixie, they had sure. some decent depth. They had names of things, and and they were elaborate mini settings early on. We've only seen Hamlet, but these I think are even better than Hamlet in that sense. They had a, a bigger area. They came with more maps, more more of the cool stuff that I love. That they were set in the world, so to speak. They were they were really integrated into the world, and they also have a lot of of cool mini. They introduce new monsters. They they are really well studied out. So I, I must say I must say that they're all round good. They don't they don't they have very few flaws, and and they rise up. They're like a solid thirteen overall the ability scores, so to speak. Okay. That, that's that's my my sense of, of the adventures, especially considering when they're done. Very good uh, points on that. One one last time, also note Lens Third that was officially published, not counting L four and L five, which are on Dragon's Foot. Yeah. You know, Deep Dwarven Delve. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he was is kind of got a strange ending to it, but beyond that, it's a really good adventure. Um, and for the longest time, before reprints and PDF came out, you couldn't get it. I mean, it was not available. So, uh, and here here it is. But now, uh, you know, we've given out a bunch of them. And re once I, I even have them at Reaper, they go like hotcakes, uh, you know, the, this. And it's not a long adventure. It's 24 pages. Mm -hmm. But it's got an interesting uh, an interesting plot to it. Um, uh, Len, Len was up on the three. Len's in the era of, I'm going to do the 3D dungeon things as you go down, you know, a different. Yeah. You know, he, he got it. Len but that's a something. cool idea. It's a cool idea. You make it smaller, the deeper it is, which is kind of, yeah. Cool, Curtis. No, so BB, uh, this is a full adventure. So the story goes like this. Uh, I think you may not have been on when I uh, and I was uh, talking about some of it. Len wrote it a lot, had written it a long time ago, before the Silver Anniversary box set came out. He got paid for three adventures. He got, I think he got paid $10,000 to write three adventures. I think that was what he said. Uh, and that was the third one. They never published it. So someone came to him and goes, we want to put this in the 50th anniversary, the 25th anniversary box set. Goes, Great. Hey, Drake. Comes to him. The entire ending is rewritten. And if you knew Len like we did, he don't play that. <laughs> and he goes, this isn't my effing adventure. You guys rewrote the whole thing. And so Len went to Gary, uh, or, or I don't know if it was Gary, who went to someone and said, this is terrible, you know, and he got a lot of his stuff back, but not all of it. So that was the story. So it's an adventure. Yeah. But it's just, uh, you know, Len, um... oh, I, I, you know what? All right, let's go there. Thank you. I can't see. So let's go to page 11 and L2 and L1. Oh, it's L2. That's why. Dummy me. I'm looking at L1. It's L2. See, I'm getting old. It's L2 that all those cross-reference stuff is. Aha. Thank you, everyone. No wonder I couldn't find it in L1. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. I don't see it here on page eleven. You meant L one there, uh, Patrick, and you're you're messing messing with me. I'm on L two and I don't see it on this page. Ah, <sighs> dum 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 dum. Let me go back to L one.
Oh, thank you. All right, so it was an L1. I'm not crazy. Oh, there it is. All right. Thank you. Man, my apologies. A normal, here, an extra healing potion mixed with a potion of diminution. <laughs> Sample will produce noticeable curing, but shrinking the effect is only 30%, 15% by another person in the party. If the full drink potion is imbibed, it will, uh, it's complete, but diminution will reduce the person to 50%. Alas, for his gear will not shrink at all. The shrinking will last for three full turns. Here, this is the one. This is the crazy one. I remember someone took this and it, and uh, they turned into something which was they had to they had to dispel magic it, a potion of pymore self cross with a potion of vampire control. <laughs> it'll um, it when tested it will give no indication of its nature other than a good feeling or warm tingling. When fully imbibed, the figure will become nervous and excitable. He will want to do something, but will not know what it is. The, the very next living thing the character mentions, however, is what he or she will become. So I can't remember who it was. I think it was one of Alan's character. He took it, and then he says, I, uh, I'm i going to check traps on the door. And he turned into a door. That's what happened. Very first physical thing. So he was a door until they were able to uh, un, un, um, undo him. Still has the same mind, but the abilities could be radically changed. No form is named within 24 hours. No transformation. Well, yeah. So that's what happened. Yep. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, speakers did not die because of me. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. I appreciate that. Yeah, I know, but I couldn't read back then. It says a living thing, but it didn't matter to me. I, got, I turned them into a door. <laughs> Gaseous form, cross of invisibility. Longevity, cross with speed. Ugh. You know, so the full potion will cause the potion to become five years younger while being able to move a 50% bonus for 30 rounds. You must roll two system shocks. If either fails, a total of two to 20 points of damage. So some neat things. He really, he put some really neat things in here. Yeah, Patrick, I'm just telling you what I did. Even if it, it, it went to the wrong uh, wrong thing. All right, final questions on these two? On Assassin's Knot or Bone Hill? All right. Time-wise, we only got about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So which one do you want to do, Tomocon or Ghost Tower? Because we won't get through both. Let's do Ghost Tower then. Let's do Ghost Tower. It's, a, it's a little bit less uh, or more central to the setting. Sounds in, good. In, yeah. I'm all in for that. Ghost Tower it is. Okay. And it's on the map and look where it is. Yeah. That's why it's central to the okay. setting. Yeah. So, and there is a Ghost Let's, Tower of Inverness and a return too. Yeah. And, and also, we have to say, it was not originally meant to be there. It was shoehorned in afterwards. It's one of these, it's a C module, so it's one of these tournament modules. It was written to be run at tournaments, not to be placed in, in a setting originally. Yeah, it's hard to get into it. He also runs a return to the Ghost Tower, and I think he runs that one in 5th edition as well. Okay. So, That's yes. So, I, yeah. Ghost Tower, the Soul Gem. This is a tournament module. Now, I was... For some reason, I didn't run this until before we were streaming, but until I'm going to say late 2000s, 2000, I think it was before my son was born. So were we in the other house? I think we were in the original house. It was like 2007 or six. And I, we had just started our first hard B group. And the great thing was I did a lot of foreshadowing because if you read the prelude to ghost tower during storms there's nothing there but all of a sudden you'll see the tower there and then the tower disappears right and i'm like this is great so the first group the hard um the hardby irregulars not the hardby um yeah the hardby regulars got to play the ghost tower of inverness um and it was probably i'm gonna say the number of this is in the 500 to 700s yep so it, it took me a long time to run it but it was perfect timing in a, in a recent adventuring group so this is this is your prototypical tournament adventure. Note, Chick had his own campaign, a hammock had his own campaign, and they start bringing these in to the Greyhawk. 
and we actually had Alan Hammock's show, and I don't have it here with me. It's Alan showed us his world, mm -hmm. the map of his world before it merged into uh, Greyhawk when we had him on the show a while ago. I sat down with Alec, Alan at Gary Con at one of the bars and was talking to him a while. Uh, very, very nice man. It was a uh, Curtis. I think you remember that uh, he was there uh, the night you guys were celebrating your win for the tournament. Mm -hmm. So this has it all. It has a chessboard, monsters, pocket planes, and a really nasty encounter at the end, which can permanently kill you. So, and look at that. You know right off the bat if you're going to have uh, uh, one of these bad guys here, um, you know, uh, you're in trouble. So, tournament modules never made sense to me. For, for, for final part of the joy for me was the immersion of the game. So, Mad Cam, that is where, though, when you think about it, this is a, this adventure here, Ghost Tower, is meant as a guardian. All this stuff is meant to guard the soul gem, right? So I understand it kind of in this one. And that it got placed in an area that I was adventuring with my players. I, th I was able to mix it into the Harvey campaign, which was kind of cool. You you guys were all partying and taking pictures and all of your DM uh, at that point. I remember Curtis that night. It was it was a, I think that, that, that Saturday night. Yeah. All the, all the, are cool. Yeah. 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 So, um, and once again, it tells you it was run at WinterCon in Detroit, November of 79. And this came out in the 80. So this is during the 80 era. Yep. Umber hooks are rough. So Lord Justinian, it talks about uh, here. And this one levels five to seven. Fair enough. I can see six to eight as well. I don't think ninth level, but I can see under ninth. The score thing, you don't need to, you need to worry about it. You're running this in your campaign, you know. Note that uh, it is a it is a difficult adventure if it's not in campaign format because it's much more. You have characters you really care about now, and in a campaign, I'm sorry, in a tournament format, hey, you're just going to try and win, right? But in a in a in a real campaign, a, my Grail campaign, you don't want your characters getting sucked up into the soul gem. That would suck. Hey, Balfrin, Balfrin, I have something you may be interested in. It's tonight tonight's giveaway. A copy of the legendary Supreme Commander from 2006. If you win, so alive is a good score. Absolutely, you get sent on this mission to get to recover the Soul Gem. Then you get through a series of, and they do have wandering monsters in here, which is good. Uh, a series of different, uh, like oh, good, you have an illusionist wandering through here. Why, huh? A six-headed Hydra just wandering through. <laughs> Gotta love them. Once again, tournament. it's set up in a tournament style. And here is the, there's the ruins without the tower. So the tower's not showing here on this picture. You know, that's what you see off. So in Anna's map here, that's what you're going to see off the coast. Right? That's what you're going to see there. Yep. When there's no storms. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not a lot of RP in a tournament game, right? So it's all about it's all about solving the puzzle and moving on. Yep, excuse me. Anna, you ever play in DM or DMness? No, I have only read it for for mapping purposes. Yep. I love this. I, I, mm -hmm. This is, if I recall, this is the this is our twenty fourth adventure that made our wall of fame. It was between this or A two. I'm sorry, L2. I think it was between those two for the final two, and we went with Ghost Tower. Tomoakon is on my wall of fame as well. And let me just, we were not going to get to that tonight. We will get to that in a future discussion. But let me say the following on this. I'm not, I like Ghost Tower of Inverness way more than Forgotten, uh, for Hidden Shrine of Tomoakon. That's not to say it's bad. Why do I have this up here? There's a reason. It's not I. It's not in any of my 962 adventures I ever ran. We ran it before we we're logging, kind of like D3 and all those. This is the first AD&D adventure 
I ever participated or played in or did anything in was this. I played in this. I did not DM it. My buddy Bill Runzer ran it for us. So there you go. And uh, that's why uh, Harold Johnson and Jeff Leeson wrote it. So um, I think Rise of the Rune Lords, am I correct? In Pathfinder, they play, they play homage to this because they have a pyramid buried in the water. Am I correct on that? Is it Rise of the, you know, uh, if someone remembers, does it cover the text for campaign and tourney play? It has a little bit. Yeah, it has, it, it has, has a, yeah, it has, tells you what to do for the, the tourney play and the points and all that, Curtis. Yeah. So. Yeah, but just, and I no. just moved it on uh, the Hidden Shrine. I just moved it, uh, Tamorak, on, on my the oh, okay. latest version of the Fine 98 map. Yeah, Dan Boggs, he, he did a deep dive into where it's supposed to be. So, oh, cool. So, yep. Mm -hmm. so, so whenever we do an update, update on mine, can we, we just relocate it? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, awesome. We will do the opposite. I will take the, the new version of, of the, the map and, and, and put all your stuff on it. So that's easier than do the you other sure? way around. Oh, because, okay. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it, because you don't have that much that is unique to your map compared to all the stuff that has changed, okay. all the other stuff that has changed. So, yeah. So you have, you have to go through multiple. It's kind of almost got, this has almost got the same feel as um, Shokanth. You got to go through multiple doors. You got to go through multiples. You got to get through multiple traps. There's, you know, you got to fight bugbears. Um, I love the chessboard. Do you ever see the doctor? You ever see the, th um, the five doctors, the Cyberman and, and the master? Then you'll understand what I'm talking about with the okay, chessboard. Okay, yeah, it's one of these th that has these kind of puzzle things uh -huh. that you have to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Chessboard one I like. Yeah, yep. the typical tournament modules to have lots yep. of stuff like that. Yeah, so it has that. Uh, and also, uh, there you go. Tell, uh, there's the there's your friend there, the nasty. Yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. very nasty. For oh, Amber Hulk that, is, is an awesome character. monster. Yeah, yeah. So here's the chessboard. Yeah, that's a cool thing. That's neat. Um, and it also has. And here you got some visual aids. Here is you got more coming up. Yep. Statues, rooms. There you go. All these you have all these different puzzle traps running through here. You have pocket planes like this. It's water plane, right? You got this island in the middle of an ocean or you know somewhere plane. You got all these little mini pocket planes you have to deal with. And then the lastly, this is your soul gem when you finally get up to the final level in the trap door. And uh, yeah, there's eight. So it, if there was less, if there was six different zones it shot into, it would be even nastier, but there's eight. If you're in a zone when it like beams you, that's bad news. It's bad news for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the chessboard puzzle is really classic. So this is, and you got, I think you got pregenons back here too. So you have some pregens that you can, you can use. Uh, you got, uh, yeah, because uh, you got prices for uh, get, uh, if you're doing a point buy for getting magical uh, gear during this. I think that's what that is back here for the for the um, yeah, which is neat. Yeah, look, you can you have different price lists. You can do up your characters different differently, which is a, a good idea that Alan had. Um, yeah, and you got look, you go back in time the to the pterodons. It's up, like it's, look at this, not for tournament use. <laughs> so do, there you go, Curtis. Good, good answer to that question there. By the way, we're going to see when we get to Egg of the Phoenix. We're going to see uh, dinosaurs too. <laughs> mm. Your Medusa, you got a Medusa who's hooded. Got a lot of cool things in here. Fire one fire giant throwing boulders. The reverse gravity room. All sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, that was cool, George. I mean, that was a neat thing that Alan did with this adventure. Here's the underwater area. I think it's a zigzagal. Did I say that right? Yeah. And you can see not for tournament use again. So there's stuff in here that you're not going to use in the tournament because it's just too much. So. And you have a, an easy way of getting back, though. They make it easy. Once you get the soul gem, you can just use your amulet of recall and be teleported back. So. New monsters, the fire bat, which is also, I believe, that's in Fiend Folio. And there you go. There's the it in ruins. Here's your characters five. 
A monk. Oh, hopefully Skagus not on still. Scoring. Time record. And all your and look, I, I so as you can see, this is kind of cool. This is kind of had that Stranger Things upside down thing when you come in from here, then it goes and yeah. reverses, and you fall into the water. Yeah, so that's a neat thing. So it's kind of got that multi dimensionality to it right there when you're coming into this one as you go through the levels. And it just shows you, uh, you know, the whole. So definitely a a neat competition. Uh, that's a cool picture fighting the fire giant right there. That's a that's a that's a good picture. Really cool. So the whole the whole idea behind this is find that and get that soul gem because there's, you know there's people been destroyed by it and uh, the Duke wants it for that purpose. So I just like that I was able. I got lucky. I was like, oh my gosh, this is right in the area that we're starting an adventure in Harvey, a published adventure. Uh, you know what? Give me give me ten seconds, everyone. Mm -hmm. Or 20. Let's see. Uh, I'll tell you exactly when I ran it. We're going to go to timeline. We're going to go to adventure log updated. Yes, I'm going to share my secrets here. Ghost Tower. Six. Oh, there it is. Number 634. Adventure, we did it. Right. Yeah, so there, there, there's Ghost Tower and Vernus by the Hog Beer regulars. Yeah. yeah. So, there. And that is, we started streaming, just so you know, we started streaming mm, number 821 is the first stream we ever did right here. So from 821 on, all the content was streamed. Oh my God, I'm way behind. I'm not, I got I to gotta add up th uh, multiples all the way up to nine. I got to add three or four of them. So, yeah. There's my log of all my adventures I've run. There you go. Jeff D's illustration really give you. Yes, on the size of giants. Absolutely. That's a great, that's another great event. Uh, uh, now, I know, Anna, you said you really love the the the, the D, uh, the, the giants in D, uh, G3, right? The the two in the background. Oh, yeah. the Queen mm -hmm. of the Spiders one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. This one's good too. I mean, he's bending yeah, down. Well, yeah, but, and we also have to remember when they were made, so yep. to speak. They, there was not that much to fall back on. So, Definitely. and then cool action scenes. And they also, um, that was that style. That was their, their early, early 80s kind of vibe to it. So, yeah. Uh, no. No, right now. I'm not, uh, that's not, I have no interest there, uh, uh, Patrick. I appreciate that, but no. No Watsy. Uh, I, I just I, I just heard, um, what's his name, uh, who used to work for um, Paizo. He went to work for Watsy. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, it, it, that was, um, oh, yeah. he was he was on the show. Um, uh, yeah. Lundin. Uh, yeah, Ron, Ron Lundin. Lundin, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. He yep. just said, he tweeted or wrote on Facebook a little while ago that he really likes it at Wizards. So, yeah. Very good for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, this is a cool adventure. Um, don't run it as a, as a tournament. If you're going to run it, take your time with it. Don't rush through it. That's the one thing. I, tournament adventures, you don't enjoy the adventure. Put some background story into it. Once again, you don't have to have it on the Woolly Bay where, where it's placed. You can move it somewhere else you want. Hey, Armin. I got to talk to you about uh, GrailCon too, man. Good to see you. <coughs> so... Don't don't worry about you know place it wherever you want to place it. Just like I said, it worked for me where it is. It could work for you somewhere else. So, <coughs> excuse me. What's up, Tino? So, um, we got through three. Note: I wanted to, if Tim was on, I wanted to talk about some other of the bees. In particular, I wanted to talk about. But, but he didn't, he would, his wife kind of stuck him tonight. So I want to talk about Palace of the Silver Princess and also uh, the Veiled Society, where the two were going to pop in and discuss a little bit. Two of his favorites in the B series, but we can do that at a future time as well. Um, that there, that the 81, when 81 came around and they realized we need more B series adventures and they started putting out all this content. Um, you know, and by the way, if you have one of these in orange, you're, you're set for life, right? You know, one of the B, uh, one of those in the orange. Uh, and then once again, this one says special instructional module here too. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, another good one. This is a mold bay. So, uh, you know, and, and Tom had taken over, uh, you know, the, the new basic set uh, was his doing. the An orange covered Palace of the Silver Princess. Yeah. I, last time I checked, uh, there, I think, I think they go for a minimum of $800. I think. Yeah. Veiled Society has the three different, and, and what was cool about the Veiled Society was, Curtis, three different factions in the city, you know, and that was the neat thing there. It wasn't two, it was three. So you had like a three, a, a three way deal going. And I, I found that Tim ran that for me. I never ran it. He ran that for me in, uh, in the city state campaign. He put that in there and that was a, a good one too. So, um, if I was to color my book orange, what, what would that work? Uh, no, I don't think you're going to get 800 bucks for it. So any questions of anything we've gone over tonight? We're getting through them. We're getting through that. We're getting through our pictures of our wall of fame. Uh, I'd say we're probably 50%. I, don't know, I haven't even, I haven't even counted. Let's see. We're getting, th but, but, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to next week. We'll uh, be on a, uh, a break from this. We're going to have something else. I'm going to see. I'm going to hold off on doing return to the eight until I can get Roger Moore back on. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. Yep. So still need to do two Mahars. Still need to do tomorrow. You know, uh, we did the Raven loss. Got to do the Raven loss and I get the Phoenix. Two more lizard King. Definitely. And then salt marsh. That's it. Salt marshes. And we're through it. We're getting there. We're getting there and discussing all of them. So what should we do on Sundays after that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Why? why, Troy, why are you booing uh, Curtis? I missed that. If I, oh. Uh, so. Um, and you may all have some adventure. <laughs> you may all have an adventure that you love. And or that was vital to your campaign. That's not up here, and that's doesn't matter. It's your it's your campaign. It's your experiences, and that's kind of what we wanted to put up here. Uh, yeah, you know, said uh, years ago, I got this idea from my friend Steve, who would put all his album covers up. And I was like, why can't I do that with Adventures? It's a great idea, and that's where I kind of got the idea from. So, oh, absolutely, uh, May Cam, uh, absolutely live stream everything now. In fact. Um, yeah, definitely. Here. Okay. So last, uh, I would suggest watching last night's game. We ran a special game. Uh, both Darling and uh, Darling Creep Show and Little Bones were on, uh, along with Crane Wrights uh, and uh, Lady Lavinius were special guests, and Mike Disney and Taryn. And it was an awesome game last night, and it, uh, it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and I my normal game is every Thursday, and we do special events on every other you know, every couple Saturdays. We'll talk about that in shout outs. So sit tight because we got some unbelievable content coming up in the shout out section uh, of what's coming up. So uh, look at that eight fifty Anna. So uh, what is going on in your world? And we'll take continue to take questions too as we're going through shout outs yeah. here, mm -hmm. of course. Well, first we can men mention what uh, you uh, will the show will uh, talk about even more. Then we have next week we have the, um, the fantasy mapping show. Yep. Let, let me yes. uh, let me go. All right. So let me uh, yep. st let me stack these, and I'll do it in reverse. I'll put that one up first. So okay. Uh, what else? Yeah. yeah uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And what else well, you got? Yeah. Going? First, uh, I'm I'm working on getting the uh, the first. Um, uh, first preview of the new 598 uh, map, the 2022 edition, 598 map. It's getting real close. I I discovered that there were more stuff to do always because I realized that shield lands and, and others needed an update. There are things that are updated in, in it was older version than I thought. So okay. so I've gone over that, but it's getting close to, to being um, ready for, for a first uh, scrutiny by the, the quality assurance team, meaning you guys. So, so um, th that is coming very, very soon. 
and then I'll the Altamira project is going in as soon as the temperature goes below 100 degrees here <laughs> we'll uh, we'll uh, I'll, I'll set my computers to work overnight to 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 run a, a, a giant um, render of the Altamira area so I can start yes. working on the splat maps and that will be a couple of weeks of splat mapping after that to, so so then uh, Jay have to figure out where the forest needs to be, where we should have farmland and stuff like that. So so it's moving into those details, so to speak. So it's going to be awesome. You know, yep. All the so, surrounding so that is areas and in. stuff. It, yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm warming up with uh, doing splat maps of, of extending my shieldland map area. So I'm, I'm kind of warming up for, for the Altamira splat map because I haven't done that in like four or five months so i needed to 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 get my mojo back up so i did that on a uh, live stream on friday so so uh, that will be uh, next week that might not be a, a, a mapping live stream because we have fantasy mapping show instead mm -hmm. but i will come back the week after that definitely and hopefully ellis and me can do some working together on on the, the the weeks when we don't have the fantasy mapping show as well and there's more heraldry coming i'm working on more um death knight heraldry oh. more elven heraldry i'm working on more horn society nice. heraldry more orcish humanoid heraldry and and stuff and also uh, one mulku uh, mike mosberg he, he um, uh, we co collaborated a bit on some more nyron heraldry and stuff so there's oh, plenty awesome. of more lots and lots of more heraldry coming so i will that will be kind of potion out every couple of weeks i will do a, 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 a post with like five or ten or something like that so there will not be huge numbers this because and now it will be new heraldry so to speak from design from scratch most of the other ones and there i realized there's some other provinces and stuff here and there that needs to to be filled out too so i'm thinking about adding them there will be yeah stuff like that so so, so that is uh, is 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 coming yeah so 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 mike and Malku and me we we've started to get a mojo on doing cool cool heraldry together so it's a lot of fun and and then there is um there was something that I was going to talk about that I forgot. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll do that on Wednesday. So, so yeah, that's awesome. So, so, yep, so we're going to go out of order. Yep. This is next week, four streams. Okay. Uh, oh boy. Oh, well, thank you, uh, George. Uh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. And also, uh, Valmoku, uh, you got your adventure in. We got a lot of people with adventures in. Yep. So we're going to go out of order. We streams Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday next week. Okay. Oh, wow, that's a big, big, All right. big for a week. Yep. For a week. The week after, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday night, Sunday. Okay. This is next week. This is Friday night, episode fourteen, fancy mapping show. Anna, go for it. Explain. Oh who yeah, we got. it's uh, Alyssa. Me. Uh, thanks to Alyssa, we got Matt Ryan from uh, Chaosium. He's one of their. I think he's their most prolific or, or chief uh, cartographer. So this will be a lot of fun. So Cthulhu fans and so on. This this is a show for you. So I think it will be uh, Alyssa and 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 Matt can can really nerd themselves down into to Chaosium and 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 the Cthulhu mapping and stuff. So that will be a really interesting because that's kind of off what I normally don't do. So there will be a lot of cool stuff for me to learn here. So so that will be a lot of fun. I, I bet since this is Alyssa's home turf by yes, far, Cthulhu. I think, yeah. So I yeah. think this could be a really cool episode. So uh, yeah, Matt Ryan uh, will be on and that's just, you know, we actually have chaos a person coming on. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. and that's yep. this upcoming Friday. And normally we have two giveaways, two $25 gift certificates from, from Frog Guard Games. So we have that. We are, you know, uh, it's a really good show. And it's once a month on a Friday evening. Yep. And it's this upcoming Friday, the 22nd, eight o'clock. Thanks, Dale. Yeah, thank really you. good show. It's a it's a it's a great discussion. So we're out of order here with Friday. Let's go back now to Wednesday. You want it, you got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Vecna, a true Greyhawk legend. Okay. Mike is Mike. Uh, Mike, myself, and Anna will do our best mm -hmm. to talk yep, about we'll our best Vecna in its glory. I know Rick Miller was attempting to get. One of the original article writers from the Vecna article on. We'll see if that happens or not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're going to talk <laughs> about us, yeah. all the. We're going to talk about all of the story mm -hmm. that exists in the Greyhawk, and then some. 
Yeah, and then some yeah. not, you know. Well, well the, the thing is that I have ideas on Vecna pre early on, so to speak, that the precursor of Vecna, and I'm also going to binge watch, I'm binge watching Stranger Things, so I'm getting to season four, so I will get both ends, the, the, as much Greyhawk in, in my own thinking as possible, and then see what the heck they, they have done with Vecna in, in popular culture, so to speak. We don't want to wait too long to do this, yeah. but Twitter's driving me crazy. Okay, uh, yeah. They just don't know what they're talking. I'm sorry. They, um, they just don't <laughs> have any clue I, what they're I, talking about on Twitter. Yeah, I don't even – I stay out of, of the general – Yeah, and I, I, it's, it's, it's I want to comment, but I know that I don't want to go down that no, rabbit no, no, hole. No, no, no. So, you, exactly. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah. Absolutely. So that is Wednesday. That kicks off the week, Wednesday. Yeah, so. <laughs> awesome. Thursday night, It's we have a, my group, a one-shot. But – John Birchfield from Blue Box will be in my house in person cool. playing this Thursday, a one shot. It'll be a Night of Yolk Adventure, the St. Lee Reliquary. I have a super surprise coming up for my players. Involves Tim. Tim, the, Tim, the ever mysterious Tim will be there. Bill Mastercrafter, the, almost all the whole crew will be there. And it's going to be a, you know, a normal one night, normal game with the friends, but John will, will be playing as well. So it'll be a, a, he's never been to my house. I, you know, he lives in Nashville, but he's, he's going to be in Pittsburgh. So he's driving Pittsburgh to Philly. So yeah, yeah, it'll be, that'll be a fun one um, for that. So um, <laughs> yeah, uh, wait, resend it. I'll send it one more time. Cannon Fire Discord, there it is. And the Virtual Graycon Discord, they're both right there. Okay? No problem. So that is Thursday night. The St. Lee Reliquary is the name of the adventure. It, it, I'll tell you this. It ties into Scott Benny's original Saint article. I've done some Greyhawk lore, and I coordinated it with Gary Hulian to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Amy, he's he's going to be in Pittsburgh and he's going to be there Wednesday. He's like, I'm driving. I want to, I don't, it's six hours. I don't care. And so I was like, okay. And he's staying overnight and he's leaving, flying out uh, from Philly around noon, noon on Friday. I'm off t this Friday. So it works. Yeah. So it'll be a, yeah. In fact, that, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Finn. You, you got it. You got it. So look for a fun adventure. His character's name is Yen Dorn. He's a ranger thief, so he's in the animal kind of those rangers, mm -hmm. um, and he's from House uh, Thronedale, where his character Ashrin, which he got from my campaign, one of the four sisters that are all archer types, specialty priests. So he's related to that group, that 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 house. So that's how we have the tie-in. So it'll be a first time. Awesome, good to see. All right, so that is so that is Thursday, Friday's the fantasy mapping show. Next Sunday. We have a crafter's creative jam. Okay? Yeah, it's time for it's that. It's time to have one. Long overdue. Yeah, well, George, um, John says he's kidnapping Bill and taking him with him back to Nashville. <laughs> so, you know, the, the Bill and Mr. Crafter. <laughs> Baker, I got you after the show. I'll give you your uh, two-week uh, VIP badge. No problem. So I have we have this sculptor, uh, the the 3D mini sculptor for Reaper. One, she does great work. Uh, Christine Van Patten, she does her own work on my mini factory as well. The great artist Mike Disney. We have he's been on before. Jeremy, the owner from Gamescape 3D. You've seen the unbelievable stuff he's been putting out. Uh, you've seen it on our table. You saw the warehouse that huge warehouse I had up last Thursday. That's his. All sorts of great wandering stuff. Got you to wandering, no problem. Um, Darling, creep show. Darling has is, is been really cranking it out with some painting, and uh, it'll be good to have uh, kind of a newer crafter to the uh, to the group on, and then build a master crafter himself. And I'm just going to sit there and let them have at each other, and we're just going to—they're all going to be doing their own thing, and we're going to have topics, and we're just going to talk. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, right. It's going <laughs> to—it'll be a really really cool discussion, and uh, just you, if you want to ask about 3D printers, you want to ask about getting into rendering with ZBrush or whatever it's, this, these are the people, uh, these are the people that'll uh, really go there and, and give you the information. Uh, you know, it's going to be a really neat show and I, I get to sit around and hang out with them. So, uh, yeah, cause I have no talent when it comes to that stuff. Fast forward to two weeks from yesterday on July 30th, last of the, the published things we got, we have confirmed. Okay. 
just a minor gain. So, I hope I hit the right button. There we go. Ed Greenwood and two drink minimum return on Saturday, July 30th. Okay. And we have uh, uh, we have the voice actor, Mark Mirror, who does a ton of work, Mass Effect, Baldur's Gates, a lot of stuff. He had, he DM'd uh, on uh, multiple, has DM'd on multiple channels. He's on the Black Dice Society with Dave Walters. So he is playing the game, and I thought it was really cool. He reached out to me and asked he wanted to play in my game. I was like, absolutely. That was <laughs> awesome. pretty, yeah, I was like, yeah. Tony's playing, Eric Boyd, the father of the specialty priest is playing, Anne is playing, and Eric Mengi, we have a full crew. Full crew of six. Mark is playing a dual class human thief illusionist. So he knows his old school. He knows exactly what to, where to go. So, yep, looking forward to that. And that'll be uh, that'll be another fun event. And that'll be on third. That'll finish up our month. But we'll have content up to that. So you know, just wanted to call that out as well. So when am I getting Todd back? I don't know. I think I don't want to say this, but I think Todd's going to be on the exact same time on another channel during Founders and Legends. So we're going to have to beat them up pretty Ooh. bad. I hate to say that, but I'm sorry. If Luke's on still, we're going to have to beat you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's okay. A little friendly rivalry there between the Gary Khan channel and us. So, but I think they have something running the coming up then but that's all right and so um getting back on again yeah so, i'll get him back yeah. on I, I i've asked him to participate in the joust during virtual grail con oh awesome yeah. mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. so along that's with a couple great. other people as yeah. well so uh that's it for tonight look at that 903 what great timing yeah. let's do the mm -hmm. giveaways we got over 100 almost 160 people on um boy i owe bones a raid because I screwed it up last week, and normally I uh, and she's playing, she's doing video, but that's okay. But we're, we'll do that. So hang in there and just say hello to Bones. That would be awesome. It would be a, a monster raid for her, in, and then I'll, I'll feel better about it. Even though she did give me shit about uh, rules last night, right? She's talking about uh, uh, I. She said something about advantage. She said, "Go, oh, what the hell's advantage?" And then that started the whole discussion, right? About can't see through the the wall of fog and all. It was really funny. So, uh, yeah, it was a funny evening. All right, last call. Everyone in? Now, remember, you got to tell me if you want if you want the classic Supreme Commander game or if you want uh, uh, want a reprint. And you can pick one of the existing modules I have. We can discuss it offline. You get what your treasures or adventure begins, so you get a Greyhawk base and then one of those. I will have Keeping the Borderlands and Bonehill back in, and it should be in this week. So if you want to wait a day or two instead of it going out tomorrow, that's no problem. Okay? Thank you, Patrick, for all the donations for those. I really appreciate it. What? No, no, I accidentally, I missed Bone Liz last week, Patrick. I, I did Darling last week, but I was supposed to do Bones last week because she had the fundraiser going. Yes. <laughs> Was it Darling? No. Bones is the one that got on me last week, uh, last night. Darling was just busting my stones about something else all night. That was cool. About me being old and frail. All right. So, uh, yeah. That's when I had to tell you I, I'm even older. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> it was fun. We had a good time. It was a great... Yeah, it was a great game. Oh, uh, yeah. it was a great game. It mm -hmm. Just the, the interaction between... Um, uh, between Lady Lavinius's character Laria and Phil the the the, uh, the gnome that uh, that Darling was playing was hysterical. It was an awesome, yep. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Secret of Little Bones Hill. That's a good one. That's <laughs> a good one. Very cool. Yeah. Can we get an orange B three? I don't have an orange B three fourth, so I can't give it to you. And the answer, the answer. See, yeah, you asked that question. I have to. You you earned it. Uh -oh. You earned <laughs> it. You earned the no, just no head. With that question, <laughs> so even if I had it, yeah, yeah, that's not happening. So when Saint Anna emote, uh, we're gonna oh, have, uh, we're gonna have, um, Taryn's gonna work on it. So oh, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah it'll be uh, definitely. <laughs> Let me uh, close this out and let's get the giveaways, and then we'll say uh, a bit of do for a couple days. Yep. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Don't hit the wrong button, Jay. It's the last button you're supposed to hit. So, yep. Arg Scott, who gave all those gift subs. It's fixed. It's fixed. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Well, they. <laughs> Twitch runs the. the yes, the, the Twitch knows or something. So, uh, they know it. So, oh, yep, my gosh. Yeah, you get extra chances for all the gift but subs. Get, you do. But I don't see him on. He may have bailed. Is he on uh -oh. still? I don't see him in chat. He may have had to go. Yeah. All right. Well, 
Uh, I'll give him. I'll give him twenty seconds, and then uh, I. Yeah, I don't see, see him on. I, I got. I got to follow the rules officially, even though he didn't yeah. do all those good yeah, subs. Yeah, you set the rules. So then I set you have the to rules. So yep. All right. He's not on. That's all right. Yep. It's part yep. of the next, mm -hmm. so the winner is Chris. What is going on, man? That's like three times in the last two weeks. Yeah, see? Holy shit. also done some, some secret uh, giving here. Wow. To, to Twitch. I remember, that's only one winner. So uh, yep. do you want do you want more more event modules? Because I've given them to you a lot already. Yeah, or sacrifice to or, the uh, do you Or do, yep. uh, um, do you want the Strike Commander game? Supreme Commander, I'm sorry. Is, is he not on either? He's uh -oh. got to be on. He's yeah, got to be on. He's he, always he was, on. Yeah, and, and he was uh, chatting not long ago. So I don't see him on either. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, uh, they, all right. People left early. Wow. Yeah. He's not on. We move on. Wow, with 136 people on, you'd think he'd be on. Holy jeez. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, we go to the, Hey, their loss is your win, everyone. BB Fan Fun. I think we Ooh. just saw BB, right? BB Fan Fun, first winner. He's on. Just got to say, hey, man. Yep. All right. He's which on. one do you want? Do you want the Supreme Commander signed or, uh, you know, it's a full, it's a functioning copy. You know, it's an old game, but it's really cool. And, or you want the modules. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, awesome. I'll talk to you offline and we'll get, we'll, we'll figure out what you want. All right. So the winner of this is going to get the Supreme Commander game. Um, <laughs> Began. Oh, that's... Began. I think Began. Began's on. I see him right there. So Began, you got it. Cool. Oh, hopefully your machine should be able to run this, but I think I don't think it'll be a problem. But it, yeah, it, it's more like, like I said, this maybe was it doesn't a, work on yeah. Windows 11 or, or... yeah, <laughs> we'll I, I, yeah. yeah um, I think it does. Yeah, yeah. Windows so, games are usually compatible. All right, so, yeah. I probably have your address too. Uh, so yep, you got <laughs> it, man. All right, so thank you all for a monster show tonight. A lot of people on. Please, uh, lastly, just oh, great to hear. If you can, I know the five dollar fee covers covers the expenses of actually using the site. We're sign up for Virtual GrailCon so we can get a better number of what we need to get as far as games go. And if you're interested in running a game, you're not sure, you don't have to be a streamer. As long as you have Zoom or Discord or Discord or whatever, you can do it. So a lot of people ask me questions. Just reach out to me. Reach out to Josh Pop Zarathon. And we will, you know, we'll help you out on that. But we're looking to get more, more in there. We had sixty-seven events last year. I think we are at twenty-seven now. I'd love to get, love to get up to that number again. It's early still, but you know, yep. I will remember that new address, Zach. Thanks. Thank you very much for doing that. That's cool because uh, you know it won't remember. It remember the old one in the U.S. United States Postal Service. We'll get that out. Thanks. So. Everyone, Anna, thanks for another monster, oh, great show. Thank you, thank you yeah. audience. Thank you for all the support. And uh, yep. just note, Vecna on Wednesday. So that'll be an awesome show. We may have a guest, or it may just be Mike, Anna, and me. So uh, yeah. you know, we may we'll we see. may throw in someone in there. And may I can thank, uh, check, out, check out some of the other games that we run and all. It's old school style. It's all miniatures and terrain. We're known for the best terrain in the uh, out there for D&D. So uh, that's what we try and do. And Phoenixy. Thanks. Uh, we got to get your game Thank into you. the system and make you just the kickoff for uh, for Grailcom. We can do that. Um, you know, if you want to do it after the show here, we can. So, oh, thanks, Saint, for a second. Uh, oh, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you very much. It, it helps. Every bit helps. All right, we're gonna rain the bones. Uh, uh, I know it's a, she's she's not, she's, but I owe it to her. So, all right, everyone have a good night, and we'll see you uh, see you Wednesday night. Enjoy the beginning of your week. Back to work, Anna. Yep. <laughs> At least I'm off Sunday. I mean, uh, Friday this week. Good. Nice. All right, setting the rate up. Keep it rolling here. Yeah. Match, 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 match. Great. Hundred thirty six five four three wow. two one bones. You better enjoy it. <laughs> wow, that's a freaking monster. Amazing.
and a lot of people that came on in that initial raid always stayed. Yeah. They must have. Awesome.